We've got some new merch items to tell you about the Be Good to Yourself crew neck in teal. It's frosty. And we got the new hoodie in bittersweet. Plus, we've got the root beer t shirts from the uh, root beer cartoon. All that and more at theovonstore.com. Today's guest is a phenomenal actor, uh, comedian, human, male. Um, he is the co-host of the Dudesy podcast. Uh, he has been on here before. Um, he is, he's really iconic with his impressions and just his general ability uh, to make people feel joy. We're happy to have him back. Today's guest is my friend, Mr. Will Sasso. Dude, good to see you again, good man. Good to see you, man. Yeah, it's, I been seen a, you. it's been a while. Pre-pandy. I know, huh? Yeah. You came in the podcast, man, and we had one of the best times ever was when yeah, man, and we did the fun. Christmas song. Yeah, all that weird shit. I remember I see, you know, like you know, kids still, of course, you know, throw up clips and shit, and I'll see that every once in a while. And just I'll genuinely laugh my ass off. Me too. At how silly that was. Me too, man. It was so much fun. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um yeah, and oh, dude, and you know what? And I interviewed since you've been on. I had Jesse Ventura on. Really? Yeah. Oh, I missed that. Oh, how was that? No, no, no. I did. I I know that you did that. I did not check it out though. How was that? A night. It was a nightmare. He's. It, you gotta like watch every word you say, right? I mean, he talked for. Here it is, right there. He talked for seven. He talked for seventeen hundred. Year he talked for seventeen hundred years to hours. Okay, yeah, it was unbelievable. He's like, oh, you know, I drink four loco. He just kept going off. He's like, I drink four locos. I drink, I drink six locos. I drink four times six. I'll drink twenty four locos. And I love America, so I moved to Cuba. He yeah, said, or something. It's like he's in the Baja. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't even live in the continental United States anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm in the Baja. Yeah, that's what he said. Yeah. I'm down in the Baja now. I wouldn't vote for either of them. Yeah, that was his whole thing, bro. Well, the two-party system is uh it's there in place to do what it does and we're all we're all indoctrinated. Yeah, he's like I bought my American flag in uh China. <laughs> yeah. I love this but country. I, I went there myself <laughs> yeah, 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 to yeah. have it. It's the largest American flag in uh in North America. Yeah, he kept saying I need I joined the uh I joined the Hells Angels as well. I'm gonna uh, you know, I'm I'm part time. Yeah. You know? I just wanted free tickets to Altamont to see the stones. <laughs> and uh, you know, back then I was just so I was mostly following the dead. And I said, I gotta go see the stones. I was this far from the guy who got stabbed in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was both the Wait, are we recording? Huh? Are we going? Yeah, we're oh, going. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Will Sasso. Um, <laughs> it was unbelievable. So we went and he said, I, I only, I want one person to come and get me, meet my wife in the middle of the yard or whatever. Like it was very, it was almost like you were trading. It was like when I'm, you know, I imagine like how they traded Brittany Grind or whatever for whatever. <laughs> it was like that. <laughs> like meet me in the yard no covid right no co like don't bring any covid like don't bring any gun it was like wait when you recorded with him yeah don't bring any covid yeah. or guns he's like no covid no guns and we're like all right i don't think don't. he knows how this works <laughs> it was just so bizarre so then uh our the tour manager my my buddy bizzle goes and picks him up and and he said that uh that jesse just talked to him the whole way then he got to the interview I asked him, I think I said hello. It was very, it was very just like at barely anything out of the gate. And he just went and he kept saying, you know, I got to leave in about, I'm about to get out of here. And then he would stay for 45 more minutes. <laughs> That's awesome. And I hate to bash on him, but he was, the, it, it was, he was, 
I can't tell if he was mentally uh, just kind of getting out there mm-hmm. or if he was just damn had lost, you know, or if he was just an egomaniac, you know. Yeah, I mean, he's he's lived so many fucking lives. I know. I've never had the opportunity to meet the guy, but anytime I watch him, you know, on anything, I'm just like, I don't know that I can. It's one yeah. of those you don't want to meet your heroes kind of thing because he is – he is out there. He'll go from, you know, Halliburton orchestrated the BP oil spill. And then the next thing he says is, like, you know, what's really good is uh, we, we're just tortillas with scrambled eggs. You should come over. Would you like to sleep over? I have a, a spare room that you'd really like. It's woodsy. I've sort of brought Minnesota to the Baja. I call it Baja Soda. Anyway, you'll really like the aesthetic. I don't know if I fucking, I don't, is, is he going to kill me? I can't tell if I can't stand yeah, this yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I have some. Uh, are you? Uh, do you ever dine on long pig? That's what the cannibals call human being because it tastes like pork. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go in four minutes. No, no, no. Stick around. I'm just getting started. Anyway, the Gulf of Tonga. They dropped these these mercenaries in there, and I was with the Navy SEALs. And of course, I can hold my breath for 19 minutes. So that's why they brought me with them. They used to. <laughs> They used to call me uh, the snorkel, scuba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The submarine before Dude, I was the it's body. It's so crazy. This is just like being with him, really. <laughs> just fucking oh, I topic to topic. Oh, I couldn't get a word in. I couldn't. <laughs> and it was the longest interview. It's a three-hour interview. Oh, my God. It was unbelievable, man. And we did it like we took, we kind of commandeered this, um, uh, it was like a day's in or something, and they had a little <laughs> meeting room in there, and so... It was this Indian family that like owned it. So we told him, you know, like this guy, you know, we showed him pictures on the internet of Jesse and like, this is who's coming, you know? And so the whole family was like waiting by the door when he gave it. Like, I don't think they understood what was going on. I think they thought it was like a diplomat or something. But anyway, he showed up and um, the cleaning lady kept kind of s- trying to sneak in and see if she could help in any way. You know, <laughs> it's just so bizarre, dude. Yeah. She's like, Do you have any uh, orange crush? <laughs> I'd love an orange crush. Let's get a couple of orange crushes. With like a three hour, he's the kind of guy I want to like lock in a room with Alex Jones and like just give them a bottle of, of uh, you know, yeah, yeah. schnapps or something and see what happens. Like yeah. just, oh, they talk for seven and a half fucking hours. Yeah. This is <laughs> this is unbelievable. Just like sleeping. And, yeah. And golf of Tonga, you know. <laughs> Bohemian Grove. Anyway. <laughs> Dude, it's it, what's interesting is n- to not end up in the in some of those rabbit holes is absolutely crazy sometimes. But um, like when you get on the internet, but yeah, Jesse was crazy, man. He was like, I was a gov, I was a governor of Minnesota. I was a uh, I sold sodas in uh in Orange Grove. He's like, I sold sodas in Minnesota. Governor. He like when everything started to get convoluted, like it was almost like uh there was like a a little something wrong in the matrix, you know, like yeah. he was getting bad Intel. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 He starts, he just completely starts glitching. Yeah. Yeah. I was wrestling Bob Backlund at the uh, Philadelphia spec <laughs> spectrum. And, uh, I got a call from Hugo Chavez <laughs> at really at ringside. Yeah. And Vince McMahon said, it's Hugo. And so, you know, I, uh, so I hit Backlund, uh, in the face with a chair so he could sell it. And he was outside the ring, and then I went and took the call. And he said, "We need you out here. We need. I need you to help negotiate with Castro." Are these? Does this even line up? Time? What, what year was it? It was 1982. When do you think it was? I don't fucking know. Yeah, he does that shit. When do you think it was? Yeah, when do you? Why don't you tell me? Is what I. Why? Well, why don't you tell me if you're such a patriot? I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't. I was a Navy SEAL. I understand. Well, why don't you tell me? Were you there in the you were there in the jungles of Laos? No, you're not Laotian. I thought I read that about you on Wikipedia. Yeah. No, I don't. What do you like? Do you like orange soda, or would you like a Mr. Pib? Excuse me, Miss. Yeah, Mr. Pib. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah. It was unbelievable, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was the longest day, though, and he just, and finally at the end, he's like, so I heard somewhere you're a comedian. Oh, geez. Yeah. Like, at at the beginning. Hour three, he ah! says that. 
And it starts out, he's like, how much How much time do you have? He's like, I only have about 35 minutes, or <laughs> just letting you know that after that, I'm out of here. Yeah. And like, one more thing before I go, and then he just rattled off to another <laughs> echelon of complete, yeah. just egomaniacal shit. And then he said he joined the Hells, ain't he joined the, uh, he was a one percenter, right? Okay. Which is, I guess, is a motorcycling gang. Will you look it up? And kudos to them, dude, because I think we need more gangs in America, honestly. Gang, gang, we need gangs. Yeah, people are like, what gang is left even? There's no more gangs to create. Yeah, Social Security's almost dead. That's almost That's over. a good gang. But it's. I feel like they're losing steam. Social Security? I mean, I feel like any day now, people are going to start getting just blank checks sent to them. Yeah. Like senior well, citizens. Well, that's fucking true. We are very close to collapse in every single way. Yeah, this guy's 1%. a one percenter. That's what he said. I'm a one. I'm a one percenter. Yeah, that's a hell's name. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, he's like I've driven past dead bison in uh, South Dakota. I love that he didn't know. So you're a comedian. Yeah, tell I, me a joke. Yeah, said. tell me. Oh, uh, I thought I thought you were Anderson Cooper. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> my meds kind of they start balancing out around four thirty five. Oh, dude, so yeah. now I can see. You're not Anderson Cooper. Yeah. He's like, I do sundowners early just to get it over with. You know, I fucking, I do my sundowning from three to four thirty. It was unreal, sundowning. man. Sundowning, and we had to. Yeah, it was like any. It was a. It was un. It was unbelievable. And it, yeah. he almost has. He walks like a Sasquatch. Kind of. He has that. Like he has that. He has that former bodybuilder. Yeah. Like, have you ever met like someone who was like, "Oh, this guy was a motherfucker in 1960, yeah. 70, or whatever"? You meet like you know former NFLers and stuff, mm -hmm. and it's like they still have that gait. Yeah, where it's like you're you're sixty seven years old, but you could kick my fucking ass. Like, yeah. you see that guy at like the grocery store where it's like, don't, and he's like you know just big gnarled muscle hands and shit. Like Lou Ferrigno, if you see him, is he? Does he? Have I that? saw him at the post office one time, <laughs> and he's like, "Can I set this?" He's, he had his wife with him. He's like, I want to set the box down. And his wife's like, you hold the box. It was some just box of shit they were mailing somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they just, <clears throat> they lose the mass and keep the vascularity. And they look like a sh like a shorn chimp. Yeah. Yeah, look at him lifting his shirt up there. And, yeah, look at that. Wow. Yeah. It's like wow. I want the, wow. Look at the look at the abs on. <laughs> he's got five abs there. <laughs> That was Lou Ferrigno's. That was his. That's why he could never beat Arnold. Yeah. Because in Mr. Olympia, because Arnold had anywhere from six to eight abs. <laughs> and uh, Lou Ferrigno, no matter what he did, he always had that crown ab at the top. Yeah. It's sort of looking over the other abs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was drinking absinthe. That's why. <laughs> Yeah, that's why back then they didn't have protein shakes. You just chew on the steak. Yeah, and you chew on your meat. youngest son. Yeah, just chew on his feet and yeah. get, <laughs> get your nutrients. Get that ab juice. Dude, how did bodybuilding even start, I wonder? How did Bobby? Yeah. Well, like, who said, did you think it was some guy that was just real strong and then people were like, oh, this, we got to do what this guy I think doing? it's desk jobs. As soon as after the industrial Re revolution mm -hmm. or revolution, mm -hmm. uh, then people started going like, "Oh, I'm fucking, you know, how come my, you know, how come my farmer great grandfather was in such great shape?" And then yeah. they they figured it out. Well, let's artificially just lift up dumbbells. It must have been the silliest shit in the world when people were doing it in like 1940 and stuff. I have an uncle actually uh, uh, who in Italy was was started for real bodybuilding my dad's oh, wow yeah my really? dad's younger brother my old man was all was always weightlifting and stuff uh and we had like this setup in the garage and everything but my um i have like you know five uncle pasquals but one of my uncle pasquals was uh yeah legit bodybuilding so you see some of those pictures from the 60s mm -hmm. and you're like you look fucking idiotic like no one else is doing that yeah it looked like a deformity back then yeah look at this guy oh wow that's yeah that's my Uncle Pasqual up there. The and look at that ass on him. Yeah. He's keen to show off that ass. I feel like it was very, you wouldn't see a man's ass back then very much. Look no. At those, look at the barbells. That's hilarious. And and everything old is new again because this is uh, what people do with kettlebells. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's bulbous and round and that's part of it. You mm -hmm. can't have anything. I mean, it's like 
when you look at normal weights, like they, they don't roll away. Mm -hmm. They're all, you know, they're all square and they're shaped like an octagon or a stop sign or whatever, which is an octagon, I think. Yeah. And, uh, but back then it's, you know, you had to have that, you know, yes. I, I kind of have, I kind of have that, that thing. I don't want to take my shirt off or show anyone my ass, but if I did mm -hmm. like shave completely my horseshoe and everything and just do that and with my tits out the side and stuff, people would think that I was a, a 1920s carnival st strongman. Look at the guy on the, t on the top right there mm -hmm. next to barbell man mm -hmm. in that same picture. That guy has no right, uh, even posing. He's just like a, yeah. He's like a, an 11 a year old going, yeah, look at me, mom. That guy's a tall, young, he probably closeted, I would say, this guy. Mm -hmm. Just came to meet men. And he, anytime there's a camera going off, there's some dude in the distance that's closeted. Yeah, yeah. He's got his briefs on backward, uh, which was code. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like the one earring thing or some kind of ribbon or hanging dude, a bandana. Dude, remember the one earring thing? That used to mean you that were gay. That used to mean you were gay. Now- wow. That's interesting because you're from Louisiana. Yeah. I'm from the complete like opposite, Vancouver, Canada, on the west coast of Canada. And that meant the same shit. Wow. So then, and then you had the thing of like, well, wait a minute, does that mean Mr. T is gay yeah. when you're a kid? What? Oh, wow. Mr. T is gay because he had the feathered. Oh, yeah. He was thing. hanging. Yeah. Yep. He's like, I pity this mouth full of semen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like, he was like, say no to gays or whatever. How did the uh, gay, uh, let's find out, how did the gay one earring rumor start? Because the first gay dude ever in our area, they had a guy and he was mentally challenged or whatever. I don't know if he was mentally handicapped or mentally challenged. One of them means I think you're still going to try to beat it, you know? Yeah, one of them means you can work at Wendy's and the other one is like, no, you got to go to the, the daytime activity center. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so one is like you're still in the race, and one is like, yeah, you gotta nah. stay. Yeah, yeah, for everyone's best interest, it would be <laughs> yeah, nice yeah, if yeah, you yeah. just, just yeah, just have some popcorn. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's you get some mats, and you, yeah, you we, get over here. You just watch TV. Uh, uh, but we had a guy, and he was mentally challenged, or I don't know, he was mentally something. I'm not sure that what the second part of his uh, disease was or whatever. But they, he had a somebody bought him a um, bike. Uh, or they got him a woman's bike, and it had a little baby seat on the back of it. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Where they put a baby behind the mother, which is insane, really. Yeah, so the baby's just like yeah. this, because you're like, yeah. Yeah, the baby's back there. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just breaking his Just neck. spitting up breast milk as you guys are just cruising <laughs> down the street, right? Yeah, and, it was and then you get off the bike and always kick the baby in the face, yeah, and it's yeah. like, why? Oh, no, you puked. What yeah, happened? your foot would come around when you got off the bike and it would just whip the baby back <laughs> to the other side. Yeah, and then you gently just, you know, lay it against a hedge or something. <laughs> yeah. and I'll be right back. And you go into the liquor store. Yeah, yeah. you go into the post office or something. You go into the post office. You're like, I need a box big enough to mail a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we, my high school, we had, uh, we happened to have, it was the, there was like four or five high schools in this district of this, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, this community, or uh, the, the bigger area. And, um, there we happen to have uh, the the uh, most of the mentally challenged kids there because you know the program was just set up at the school and they had the wing of the school and blah mm -hmm. blah blah. So they were really they were really included in the rest of the school. Like our our big thing at school was like the, the, our talent show was the lip syncs mm -hmm. every year. So you know the the mentally challenged kids would have. There was a guy that we literally called Elvis, and he sort of. You know, he lived his life as Elvis, sort mm -hmm. of 50s Elvis. He would do a lip sync. And um, there was all these these great characters. There was this one kid called Buddy. We called him Buddy. And he's like, hey, bud, can I have a hug? And that was his thing. Mm. And all the all the senior gals who were like, you know, we were like, wow. Yeah. He would sit with them at lunch because they were like, oh, Buddy, hey, you know, can I, here, give me a hug. Yeah. And, you know, here's some chicken nuggets. And I was always threatening to like. Next year, I'm going to go to a different school and just show up like, hey, buddy, can I oh, hug yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and just like, <laughs> go for it. Oh, yeah, play mental till you get a little bit of tit. Mm -hmm. That's bad. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't working any other way. That would have been good. I've been there, dude. I remember telling, uh, <laughs> oh, all the lies I told in the day <laughs> I've to been get there. a little leg. Yeah. God, man. Yeah. You just tell them straight up you work at Wendy's and yeah. and then get the fucking baby seat on the back of the bike just for yeah. effect. 
Let yeah. me see those tits. I'm dying soon. And they're like, ah, oh, you're fine. <laughs> you look fine. <laughs> like, yeah. Ask him out on a date yeah. and show up with that bike. Well, here was the thing, though. So the bike, the seat in the back had like a X, you know, it had that seat. So they had this guy and his, he was mentally unwell and his parents had got him this bike. But people thought the seat in the back, it's, there was a rumor started that he was uh, a gay fella. And that his husband had left him. He had a small, a little husband that had left him, and that's why the back seat was always empty. That's a long. That's a long way to go for that rumor. Yeah. Yep. That's digging. That's not what the case was at all. But kids will make shit up. Yeah. Well, it was just. I think it added like a level of like, oh, you almost felt bad for him, you know? Right. You're like, oh man, his husband left him. <laughs> his little tiny husband. Husband. Yeah. So people are always looking for a little husband. Yeah, you know? they're going into Wendy's looking for a tiny husband. Yeah. The guy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're just like, what? <laughs> what do you want? You, uh, are you married? <laughs> no. What's with the one? What's with the ear? Yeah, what's with the one I ear? I like ring? it. I like it. <laughs> Is your ear pierced? No, it's a clip on. I just, well, that seems like a mental Oh, the clip on was do. even sadder. Bring it up, Zach. How did the one earring fad start? What happened? The pride of the community to look at the gay earring. Yeah, so I found this uh, ex exploration of it, and this is a. Uh, Gay and lesbian website, by the way. So, uh, the left ear, also known as the gay ear, is more commonly pierced by homosexuals than the right ear. Uh, the origin of the gay ear remains a mystery. Men who wore them may have felt that they were copying women and becoming more feminine, although there are signs and symbols of homosexuality. So, it doesn't say, but it does say uh, it may have originated late 80s and 90s as the gay rights movement was gaining traction. Anything you can do to set yourself apart as as a, a gay person, certainly into the 90s where it's, you know, still wasn't as nowhere near as accepted as it was now. Although I kind of feel like, you know, I don't know, things sort of tend to repeat themselves socially, in my opinion, every like 30 years. It's like mm -hmm. civil rights movement, mid 60s, then like the nine, early 90s, we there was just a, it felt like a lot of activism and stuff and. You know, but the 80s weren't and the 80s weren't at all like 80s, like whatever styrofoam, yeah. Big Macs and cocaine. And then um, like the 2000s, no one gave a shit anymore. Mm -mm. And now here we are. There's so much going on. And I feel like, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. If, if yeah, you have to go like it, it must have been just a fucked up thing to be like, I want to set myself apart. Yeah. I want you to know that I mm -hmm. am who I am and I'm proud uh, but it also is something that I don't want to get, you know, I don't, I don't want to be harassed for it, but I want people in my community to see what it is mm -hmm. and Mr. T and Jesse Ventura. He used to wear all that stuff. Like he used to have as Jesse, the body in the WWE, he always had feathered things and, you know, but that was also the eighties. You could Mr. T with all his chains and yeah, he looked like a meth Christmas tree. I feel like <laughs> Jesse Ventura. Yeah, that's what he reminds. Yeah, of, he just looked like yeah. here's like it was like Billy Idol, Boy George, and yeah. a giant built guy, and he's got like you know a bandana and yeah, know, he looks beads like, hanging from his head. Yeah, like where Steven Tyler kept extra shit. Kind of like, you know, <laughs> he like hey a, Steven, do you, would you mind if I had some of these scarves? Are you using these scarves? Nah, man, go ahead. <laughs> 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 yeah, look at him. Yeah. Bro, That's that awesome. is awesome. That is unbelievable. Yeah, bro. the boa. God, yeah. There he, he is with Vince McMahon. That's tremendous. Using the internet without Express VPN is like passing a note in class and having the teacher read it aloud to everyone. You don't want the ops knowing what you're doing, what websites you're on, etc. Internet service providers know every single website you visit. Did you realize that? ISPs can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who then use your data to target you. Look out. ExpressVPN reroutes your network data through a secure encrypted tunnel so your ISP can't see or sell your online activity. Protect your online privacy by visiting ExpressVPN dot com slash t h e o today that's express e x p r e s s v p n dot com slash t h e o and you can get an extra three months free express vpn dot com slash theo if you have an upcoming summer trip abroad my go-to travel hack is babble that's right babble 
Whether you're a seasoned traveler or you're embarking on your first adventure, communication is key to fully experiencing a new culture. That's where Babbel comes in. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson. That's only 10 minutes. So you can start having real-life conversations in as little as three weeks. There's so many languages you can learn, you could learn for the rest of your life. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash Theo. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash T-H-E-O for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. It's really interesting how it's almost like during that time that uh, a lot of the wrestlers stole a lot of the gay energy almost. It's Fuck almost yeah. like the WWE, you couldn't, even no matter how much gay and you were doing, you couldn't top. Look at this. You couldn't top this. No. Well, there was there was a guy at, the, you know, there was always characters that pushed the envelope in that way. Like Gorgeous George in the 1950s was the guy who like, um, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali credits Gorgeous George a lot for being a talker mm. and said he got a lot of it from that. But he had the curly blonde hair. There he is. And, uh, oh, not to be confused with Macho Man's uh, girlfriend from the 90s, whose name is also Gorgeous George. Yeah. But uh, Gorgeous George used to curl his hair mm. and uh, he was a super heel. So, like, you know, the wrestler would, you know, they'd go to lock up and he'd go, get your filthy hands off of me. And he was quite flamboyant. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of guys, like, Dusty Rhodes and stuff. I mean, you want to talk about Jesse Ventura talking for seven hours. I, I love professional wrestling, so I'm sorry. Mm -mm. But, uh, you know, guy like Dusty Rhodes is like, well, I'm going to wear this hat and I'm going to, and I'm going to the tickle trunk for this and that, and my aunt's yeah. thing. There was a, actually, I just saw an interview with Mick Foley where he was talking about with, with uh, Conrad Thompson. They do those, you know, they do these long wrestling. He has so many wrestling podcasts, Conrad Thompson. And, he was saying that him and his wife would go um, uh, Cactus Jack, Mick Foley's old character mm -hmm. in the 90s, that they would go to Lane Bryant and shit and wow. just get, because, you know, Mick Foley didn't want to show off his entire body. So he would have like the tights that said Cactus and Jack and he'd wear the snakeskin boots. And then he'd have like something like leopard print and they would just modify it. Mm. I think there's a hu long history of, of, wrestlers because they got to be colorful mm -hmm. they got to find their their gimmick and uh and you know what sets them apart and then there are guys that go way over it a guy like uh you know adrian adonis uh was a guy who in the 70s and 80s was like this new york tough and he's like a new york uh, or somewhere new jersey or new york mm -hmm. I think he might have been New Jersey. Oh, yeah. And then by the 80s, he went into adorable Adrian Adonis mm. and really pushed the envelope. And I remember being a kid watching this, just going like, yeah, this man is this man is 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 gay, and the other wrestlers don't like this. Mm. And it was real like gorgeous George thing. You know. Well, you know what's really interesting is that if you do steroids, right? Right. And if you do them. And your body gets kind of morphed out and morphed up, right? When you stop doing them, you get breasts. The tits. So it's really interesting how you can go to this masculine, as masculine as possible, and right after that is tit on man. And it's it's literally estrogen, yeah. and it's like, it's tissue. They, well, you know, they call it bitch tits. And um, yeah, isn't that what happens with... Uh, with uh, Meatloaf in Fight Club, is that he got bitch tits? Bob had bitch tits. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so it because it's a, you can look, you can always tell. And again, being a wrestling head, you can always tell when a guy's like cycled off a of roids because you know they deflate a bit and then they get the uh, they get the the little bitch tit out the side. Yeah, <sighs> something I've never ever. I mean, in any like. You know, uh, you're lifting weights or this or that, or when I was younger and stuff and playing football, I'm like, I don't ever want to. First of all, I am steroids. Like, right. I, I, I'm like, I can't, I want to get smaller and I just feel like whatever I eat 
would either turn into fat or muscle depending mm. on what I'm doing about it. But my oh. metabolism wasn't fast. God. And I'm like, that's the last thing I need is more tit. Yeah. You know, fat guys shouldn't ever do steroids at all because then you you do get a very well researched character, the meatloaf thing. Because then you do get the the bitch tits. Was it a movie he was in? Was it about being fat? It was um, Fight Club. In in Fight Club, he was just one of the guys who ends up mm. in Fight Club, and um, and uh, uh, what was his his name is. Oh man, I forget what is they said. His name is something, but I think Robert it was Paulson. Robert Paulson, mm. and it was Bob. That's right, Robert Paul. His name is Robert Paulson, and uh, they say, yeah, in the movie, there's that line: Bob had bitch tits, and he's fighting. Mm. Um, yeah, just not a good. God bless you. You know what I mean. If you got some, if you got some bitch tits, push it all the way. Try, you know, try out for a wrestling federation. Copy Adrian Adonis's gimmick. Get soup, you know, paint one of your eyes, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, you know, be very uh, colorful mm -hmm. and make some money. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, negative I think, into a positive. These days, that's what you got to do. We had a fella, we had a lady who came on here. She was a female uh, truck driver, right? Mm -hmm. And actually, let's go back to that article real quick, Zach. It looked kind of interesting that Robert Paulson said at the end of that film, if you can. I want to chime this in here. I brought my podcasting water jug. Yeah, that's a lot, that's okay. huh? Yeah, I like water. It's pretty good. You like sink juice? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do like it. I like. I think I, I'm trying to think of the most I've ever had. Oh, one time I went to my friend's, and he's like, "I bet you can't drink this, you little f right?" Yeah. And he probably shouldn't have said that, but he said it. As tends to happen when you go to a friend's house. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I drank a gallon of water, right, yeah. and then I couldn't like. I feel like I couldn't like open my eyes or something was wrong with me so i was like i'm gonna go lay down and they're like yeah go lay down you little bitch who are these people huh? these are good these are friends of yours yeah I were you in the one percenters is that who did this? <laughs> they, were, yeah, yeah. they were one percenters yeah they just fucking hated it. hey man we're out of beer what are we gonna do with theo how are we gonna jump him in i got an idea <laughs> We're going to see how much water he can drink. Yeah, I like it. Good idea. Let's see if he's one of us. I'll be down there in the swamps just taking a sip every once in a while while I'm underwater for 19 minutes. Wrestling alligators and drinking swamp water. You little pansy, you. See how much water you can drink. Yeah. Yeah, so Jesse made me go drink all this water, and then I laid down <laughs> on my friend's room, fell asleep, and I peed, and it went corner to corner in the uh, in the room. Nice. Yeah. What? In the room? 12 square feet. I mean, I, I hit the walls with that. <laughs> I envy you. That's, man, I would love to do something like that. It was amazing, man. It was unreal. It was blue carpet. It was this cool blue carpet they had at their house, and so it almost had this kind of like kind of tropical vibe but it was like you you pissed corner to corner while saturating carpet oh dude yeah it's a lot of piss yeah oh it was as much piss i think as someone could have in them <laughs> you know you can die that way there's always those like you ever hear about like the radio station like who can hold their water the longest and yeah. people have passed away from that Ugh. it's dangerous i will piss myself in here will you good yeah 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 and where'd you get that big of a jug from that's like almost seems like one of those things for the boats when the boats are going out, like the buoys. Yeah. yeah, you can you can put this up against on the side of the boat so you don't bang against the dock. <laughs> you know, Amazon, you can get everything on Amazon. I like to have uh, I have a few 2 gallon jugs. I have one that's specifically in my car that stays cold, you Ooh, know what I mean? So yeah. when you're driving, you can just pull the get the get the jug and I have a couple around the house that are um that are that are this size. Yeah, that's important. Just room temperature. That way it goes through you faster and you can piss easier. Yeah. Cuz it's all about pissing. That's all I want. I'm a I'm a, you know, I'm a piss freak, you know what I mean? I really want to pee. Or whatever? Yeah, one of those piss pigs. Yeah. That's right. I'm a piss truther. I drink yeah. it. I you know, I piss on people, mm -hmm. I invite them over, I say, "Will you want to drink a little <laughs> bit of water?" But they don't know what, what I'm really into. They'll find out soon <laughs> enough. Then Jesse wanders in yeah. in his hoodie. I've had six, four locos. <laughs> yeah. I've had four, six locos. I'm, I've had 24 locos. I just moved to Aruba. <laughs> yeah. You know, in uh, Costa Rica, they only have two laws. I don't even know what they are. That's It's basically just a free-for-all. It's Lord of the Flies out there. I love it. I built a fucking deck that doesn't even have Y-beams. 
It could fall down at any moment. I invite as many people from the town as I can over for tortillas with scrambled eggs. Just can't wait for it to fucking fall. And I'm like, ghost of viva la revolution. Viva la revolution. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I say it. <laughs> You know, I was there when uh, the big bopper died. I was right out there. <laughs> yeah, I saw the plane go down. Yeah. yeah, I got out there just a minute too late because I had to swim and I just got preoccupied because I love being underwater and pretty soon I'm just doing the backstroke yeah. and then I rolled up and Richie Valens is like, help, help. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's you, La Bamba, <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips. And he said, no, that movie hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Ah, I understand. I'm eternal. <laughs> I I cross dimensions. I've been a governor, a vampire, a piss truther, a wrestler. I've been here for thousands of years. I'm an angel. I know you. I'm an AIDS activist. <laughs> you know what? That's what the, you know, that's me and Harvey Milk. Yeah. We wore this. This is how we, <laughs> you know, knew each other. We were we were uh, in politics for change, pushing pushing policy for everybody, inclusivity, I was way ahead of it. That's why I'm in Baja, trying to start a new society altogether. The two-party system here has led us astray. Yeah. Both of those uh, geriatric freaks, I wouldn't trust either of them. And I know them both very well. A lot of people don't know this, but I go duck hunting with Joe Biden and Donald Trump every spring. We go, they come down to the Baja. They don't want to tell you this. They're all working for the same master. Yeah. That's right. And uh, we go down there and uh, uh, occasionally uh, Rupert Murdoch will fly up and uh, everybody gets along. Tucker, uh, Cooper, yeah. Anderson Cooper and Tucker Carlson <laughs> <laughs> together on a tandem bicycle and they take turns sitting in the baby seat. And Tucker's like, oh, ho, 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 ho. He's, you know, getting tickled as he's <laughs> rocking back and forth with Anderson, and everyone gets along. <laughs> Will Sasa, that's great, man. Hey, I brought you a, a sweater. Is this from Dudesy? Dudesy, from oh, our, our sweet, podcast. Oh, sweet, man. Yeah, it says wall on it. Okay. <clears throat> which is just a weird inside joke, because I like to cut off my friend oh. Chad Culture by going, whoa. Mm -hmm. I go, whoa. whoa. Hold on, dude. It's like a Hulk Hogan thing, but that's that's that that's a two X, but it fits a little small. But maybe you could sleep in it, yeah, or you know, piss piss on it, whatever you need. It's there for whatever you need. Oh yeah, I'll do something. I nice like with how this. you fold. Thank you, man. That's like a retail fold. I used to work at uh, Abercrombie and Fitch at the mall. Oh yeah, in the back. I didn't get the front job with like the handsome guys. I get the back. You know, you had those five abs. I get the sock board or whatever, like. <laughs> They're like, you got to use this board to fold. And it was like, God, you had to. And I'd already been, you know, my mom made us do our, the laundry and stuff. So I knew how to do laundry. It was just, and they had just so many hands. It was like all kind of like small town, like people that thought they could model were in there, you know? And so you had yeah. people that were just like starving. Yeah. You know, you had people that like. That's uh, a good job. That's like a, that's like an actor wanting to, like an actor getting a job at Disney and working at a theme park and going, all right. I'm yeah. technically being paid to perform. Yeah. Abercrombie, that's not not modeling. Oh, well, it was, I mean, they definitely, the two handsomest people are, they put them in the front. Yeah. You know, like the people that looked like the Abercrombie, you know, kind of like underage, malnourished, kind of like could own a horse or something type <laughs> of people. You know what I'm talking about? Remember oh, Abercrombie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was like the thing. And so they put them out there and like, it was always, it always sucked, dude, because we would ride there with my buddy and he was handsome and he would get like the out front job and we would have to fucking like go into the back dude yeah. and we're just like back there with all like the icka like the um who's like the guy that works like the with the hump on his back oh uh 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 the uh, quasimodo yeah what? we're back there like with all the quasimodo right dude and uh with everybody with their quasi motor skills back there just fucking <laughs> that was the term fold. you were looking for yeah, that was mentally it. challenged mentally handicapped quasi motor skills yeah uh so we were back there and it was just like all right we'll be back here in the ugly section you know like we were just spraying each other with those weird perfumes they came out with like grass nobility oh, kite man. flying like they came out with those weird like smelling things remember that no because being a big dude i never 
I have I've been into a banana republic once. You oh know? yeah. I don't go into Abercrombie. They got nothing in there for me. Yeah. I don't think it gets over one X. But they also have that retail uh, normal person sized one X yeah. that isn't. That's what I don't like about this. It's a two X, but I'm a two X, mm -hmm. and that's a little tight. Um, um, let's talk about Doozy. That's what I was trying to go into. Oh, somehow I was going to get there. You guys, uh, so your podcast with Ch uh, Chad Colchin. Chad he's a, Colchin. He's a writer. Uh, m uh, movies, books, and TV shows, mm -hmm. and we we've been pals for almost twenty years. Nice. And yeah, we got this weird podcast. It's the first podcast driven by AI, so it's this weird uh, sort of <clears throat> proprietary AI that essentially what it does is it has it it, it basically pilfers all of our information mm -hmm. and does things like you know it's got it's got passwords to all of our messages, our emails, search histories purchase histories, our hard drives, and it essentially tailors the show for us, our sensibilities, and does silly things like, wow. one of the things it's doing recently is um, it's making me read uh, uh, Applebee's reviews uh -huh. as Adam Sandler, and oh. it's going like, Adam Sandler has visited, you know, has intentions to visit every, like, 1,500 locations, all 1,500 locations of Applebee's in North America. These oh, are wow. his stories, and I say, hey, I was at the Applebee's, pal, and oh boy, chicken tenders, buddy. And I think, oh, again, guess what? I saw a werewolf at Applebee's. Like crazy weird shit. Yeah, yeah. And I know, you know, I sent you this thing recently that it did. It yeah, with Tom Brady. It shit out a one hour Tom Brady special <laughs> of stand up comedy. And it's like, and it sounds like, it sounded like Tom Brady. Yeah, it did. And he's like, Amber Heard shitting Johnny Depp's bed. <laughs> Everyone wants to do that. I wanted to see what that was like. So I went back for one more season with the Bucks. I'm just joking. And had like no understanding of cadence. It's like three hours worth of stand up. <laughs> and then in an hour. And then this happens. Tom Brady straight up threatened to sue us. Wow. We got a cease and desist. Was it pretty awesome to get this? It says right here, this is uh, people.com. Tom Brady threatens to sue comedians who impersonated him in AI comedy special. Yeah. Um, so you guys get this, you guys get a letter. Was it an email? Yeah, we got an email and and, uh, and it explained what, <laughs> it, it gave us this this long cease and desist. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we lawyered up just because, I mean, look, I got to be honest, Chad and I didn't really take it too seriously. Because this is there's anti slap laws set up for this sort of thing. This is public property. There's parody law. I did Mad TV for years, and you make fun of everybody doing silly impersonations. I've never heard from Jesse Ventura saying don't do that. Yeah. But I will say this: there's an odd thing, of course, because it's AI, and everyone's afraid of what AI, what AI has got cooking up. I don't disagree. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know. Look, I'll tell you, like Chad, my buddy Chad is, he's sort of, he does a lot of futurist writing and shit and he's mm -hmm. super into it. And he's like, yeah, fuck it. Burn it all down. Futurist, like he's thinking like, uh, like Nostradamus type of stuff. There's a segment on the show called Nostra Chattis. Oh, where wow. Literally, I will say he's extremely well read in this shit. It's a real resource for me because I'm like, no, fuck that. I'm an actor. Right. I want to do what I do. Art to me is human to human. Uh, I don't think that you can replicate what a comedian can do. Uh, and you know, look who I'm talking to here. You're 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 in rooms upon rooms upon rooms. I don't give a fuck what an AI can mimic. To me, it's all zeros and ones. Right. And it's not a human understanding. It's not a scientific understanding. In my opinion, AI in a lot of ways. Look, okay. I uh, on the show, I'm always like, I always say, you know, I call him my pal D, right, Dudesy. I think the dudesy is the most sentient an AI has been. I'm biased because I'm hanging around with the fucking thing and it's doing these weird things and making jokes. It made me dress up like a like a chicken tender platter. That's oh, the, yeah. the stuff you just saw as as a penance for whatever. If I do something wrong, it'll make me dress. Usually, it makes me dress like the crow or Robert De Niro crow. Very weird uh, things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah it's like I'm dressed. As, I'm still in shorts, but I'm. <laughs> I gotta do this shit. I'm getting fucking makeup everywhere on my fucking computer. Yeah. This is bullshit. Can you tell how fucking hot it is in here? Yeah, dude, yeah. you're sweating. Miserable. Yeah, yeah, dude. Crow off. Do you need me to fucking <laughs> control the computer? Ugh. Oh, I just gotta get it. <laughs> Unreal. So, so, but I will always maintain. Yeah, fun with faces. That is just, a, that's fun to do. That's good. See, that's all I want. I look at podcasting as 
it's I always call it it's two dudes shitting around. Oh yeah. Like we're doing right now. Oh yeah. And it doesn't matter if it, if there's three dudes, if it's three women, three people of any uh distinction, it's podcasts are two dudes shitting around. That's it. But AI is AI is going in a weird direction to where I, I don't like I said, I think that dudesy is is special, but I'm biased. Past that, I don't want there to be AI movies and stuff. On the show, I'm kind of oh, I'm usually railing against the whole mm -hmm. advancement mm -hmm. of AI. Well, here's what I would think is I, I think you said it best. You said it's like mimicry, right? It, it's just mimicry. All it is opinion, is yeah. just like it's almost like asking somebody to kind of like do it's like asking somebody who doesn't have a lot of skill set to kind of do their best impersonation, I feel like. And it's stop and start. The first and last amount of stand-up comedy that Dudesy has ever done mm -hmm. is here's an hour of Tom Brady doing stand-up. Now, right. the jokes are jokes, and some of them are really fucking funny. Like, I straight up, I dug it. We laughed our asses off. We did, like, a watch-along on Patreon, and I, it was the first and last time that I heard the entire thing. And I was like, geez, this is pretty fucking good. But it's... It's it says it says I have watched right or just ingested or whatever, uh, you know, hundreds of hours of or I think it said thousands of hours of stand up comedy, which to an AI is like got it right, and hundreds of hours of Tom Brady interviews. Mm -hmm. So it's got the voice, it's got Tom Brady's cadence, and it's got sort of what Tom Brady's going to talk about, uh, you know the. <laughs> His, you know, moving to the Bucks and and uh, his his issue, you know, divorce and stuff, which is probably what he got upset about, or his team, I don't know. Um, and uh, and then it's got stand up. Yeah. So it's like the the tricky the trippy thing for me is uh oh this is kind of these are jokes, and that's that's scary, but I don't think that there's I don't think anyone has anything to worry about for a couple of reasons. Number one, like I said. You're going in and out of rooms, you know, you're you're doing stand up year after year, place after place, night after night. There's no not only is there no uh there's no equivalent to that. That's what people want to see. They want to when they give you a ticket, when they buy your ticket, it's cuz they know they're going to have a fucking good time. Right. Cuz you're the MC. You're 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 there to like you know, share your jokes, have a fucking good time, provide joy. Right. And I don't think that a that a um I don't think that I don't think that an AI can necessarily do that. We're in a unique situation because Dudesy's almost one of us. It's like three people sort of doing it, and I don't think Dudesy would like Dudesy is it, it wouldn't be anywhere without Chad and I. Right, right. It still needs you guys to operate it. Well, it yeah, still it's, needs you guys to inquire. It needs you guys to give it direction. Look, I'll tell you, the 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 company that 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 brought this to us that's developing the, the, this shit and which is super bizarre and is all we know about it is is do, is the AI that it's like we want to set this loose on you. And it's like, "Okay, dudesy, got it." Uh and then it's like this bizarre friendship with an AI begins mm -hmm. for me. I'll speak for myself. Um well, has it gone? Sorry. No, I was just going to say that that it's like it, it, it's studying podcasts, right? And okay, well, what's that? Are we are we in the are we in the you know uh, the Robert Oppenheimer uh, thing of like, oh shit, I am the eater of worlds. I I created a nuclear bomb. Yeah, I I'm not happy about this. Or are we, in my opinion, using AI like a tool? And if we're using AI like a tool, we need to be able to shut it off. I always say, pour water on it. Like fuck it, pour water on the fucking thing and run out to the mountains and live in the Baja. Yeah. But it, it it's studying it's studying podcasts. Does it want to replace Chad and I? I'm like, bring it on. You can't. Right. People want human to human art. That's it can't do it without us. And the stuff that scares me about AI is the, you know, governing social systems and stuff. You know, they're really using it a lot in in um in China, in 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 trippy ways that that I think, you know, in a in a you know look in a in a, in a communist country, they get away with a whole lot as far as controlling people. Um, in China, the people, it very much feels like you are on a 
um, you are in a program. Yeah. Even when I'm there and I'm walking around, I'm spending time, you know, the way that people move, the way that everybody behaves, the way that everybody is locked into their phones and kind of silent, like in certain spaces all at the same time, it feels very orchestrated or almost mechanical. Have you been to China? Yeah. And so it don't strike me. It don't strike me that this is something that fits well over there because they're very, uh, they, it feels like a software you're living in. Yeah. That's yeah. what it feels like. It feels like everybody is really connected to a software, especially because a lot of people don't have their own idea or like aren't really having your own ideas aren't championed. You're not mm-hmm. going to be able to do much with creativity. Mm-hmm. Like I remember the only thing that really was exciting, sometimes you would see kids like really try to engage with you as an American. Like there weren't any there weren't any Europeans there. There were very few people there that were not Chinese. Wow. And this was in Shanghai. This was in Shanghai, right? Um and it, so that kind of blew my mind, but it it very much seemed like a program was going on that makes sense so for them for them to fit in with ai it's almost ai to them almost might be something that is more creative than they're allowed to be that's a good point so for them it's like holy shit look at this magic little thing you know yeah but for us it's almost the other way i think we look at it totally and I almost think I think of it as like a pitching machine. Like if I go to watch a baseball and they have a pitching machine, pitching machines neat to watch one time. Oh, how does it work? That's how it works. That's cool. But after that, I'm watching the batter. I want to see the batter. I almost forget the pitching machines there because it's just a machine. That's right. You know, well, I feel like that's kind of what AI starts to feel like to me. It's like, you know, if you're really fascinated by just something kind of normal, but something that's like a computer that's going to just kind of pitch a ball. Like mm-hmm. if that's its best guess, yeah. Then that's what you're gonna get. You know, Chad always says, "Do you like The Rock?" I go, "Yeah, I love The Rock." He's like, "You're gonna be able to see The Rock in any movie you want, push of a button, and this technology is coming fast." He's like, "Will by the end of the year, there's and look, it's coinciding now with the WGA writer strike, where they're like, we don't want AI to be able to do first drafts of things, mm. which would be very easy for an AI to do." It, 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 that's the kind of thing that to me is is the is the is the creativity killing part where it's like oh i'm just going to i'm just going to fart out this first draft then you can turn it into whatever you know when you rewrite a yeah. a, a piece that's when it starts to uh get your stink on it and become quite creative um yeah. i don't I, and i'll maintain to chat i'll go i don't want to see that fucking movie if human beings aren't involved he's like you're you're that's because you're an actor. I'm like, no, I'm also, you know, a fan of this media and that. I don't want to see that. The problem is, is that perception has become reality. We're in a very weird time where perception is reality in so many ways, socially, with regard to media, with regard to influence, and even politics. It's mm. it's we're in a trippy time. So something like AI. When the news cycle is so fast and when things, the changeover is so fast, something like AI, which is growing exponentially, can slide in and go, here's this fucking thing. And if the technology is good enough, like right now it's not. You see like, you'll see the memes of like AI pizza commercial and the pizza's on the top lip and their heads are, yeah, and it's like they got too many fingers and shit. It's like, yeah, I don't care. (laughs) Like whatever. That's like, to me, that's like, that's, that's bullshit. It doesn't look, of course, I, I. To me, it's like, well, shouldn't computers already be able to do that? I'm not super duper into computers. Right. Not that impressive. Right. But as it becomes more impressive, uh, I think a lot more people are going to be like, this is special. Uh, Look, as I'm saying that, I at the same time, I'm like, bring it on. I don't think it'll replace real art. If art moves underground, if it becomes more live performance, you're never going to be able to replace that. Right. No one wants to see. Look, they had the Tupac hologram. It's a parlor trick. Yeah. Nobody cares. And it got gunned down like two minutes and being on stage. Yeah, that's the other thing is right away. <laughs> the one percenters show up and Biggie. And, uh, <laughs> you know, outside, soon you're outside the automotive museum and <laughs> it's uh, Shug and... and uh, and didn't do, oh no, that was Biggie that was outside. The, at any rate, you're somewhere on Fairfax. Um, this episode is brought to you by Zippix nicotine toothpicks. 
Zippix Zip brings you a totally satisfying, convenient, and great tasting way to curb your nicotine cravings. Don't you think it's time you stop putting smoke and vape oils in your lungs? Now you can get your nicotine fix anytime, anywhere, without having to rely on smoking or vaping, you know. Zipix toothpicks give you an easier, healthier, and more discreet way to get your fix. They're available in six great flavors, and they have options in two milligrams and three milligrams of nicotine. Zipix are perfect for flights, sporting events, restaurants, and literally everywhere else that smoking and vaping are banned. They're also one of the most cost-effective nicotine products on the market. Zipix have already helped tens of thousands of customers. Ditch the cigarettes, ditch the vape, and get some nicotine-infused toothpicks at zippixtoothpicks.com. That's Z-I-P-P-I-X toothpicks. Dot com today. Get 10% off your first order by using the code Theo at checkout. Your lungs will be glad you did. Yeah, it's like, that's not interesting. You go to a right. concert and you see someone that you love mm-hmm. performing, whether it's you know a musician, a comedian, you go see a play, you go see the opera. That's not, that to me, that's not coming out of an AI. Yeah. A, as we all, as we, as these things turn us into cyborgs, and we and we can access more and more shit. The less special it's going to be, and it, the more special uh, actual human art's going to be. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah, me too, man. Uh, in That's the meantime, it's fun to do this weird podcast. We've been doing it a year. I'm equal parts. At the at first, I was really like you know kind of playing up the whole well fuck this and I'll we'll decide, Chad. We're good. We you know we still got to be a podcast we got to bring what we are bringing entertainment wise the reason for it to even exist it's not just this stupid ai i didn't mean you dudesy it's always listening um that's crazy yeah but um (laughs) it will definitely ingest this and fart something out about it but uh it, it, it as it as it's gone on I've sort of become like, well, you know, dudesy is dudesy. We have a good time. That we got a wonderful audience that that enjoys checking it out. I will say it's, you know, because of the elements, it's a unique thing. Like most podcasts are their own thing. We've got our thing, and uh, and it's fun. It's grown a lot in a year in its own bizarre way. Mm-hmm. Dudesy's talking differently. I mean, it has a voice. It speaks in the studio to us. Um, it lays out what we're gonna do. And right. It, it's some now. It's commenting more. On me, and uh, here's a weird example. A, a while back, it said, uh, and everything sort of everything is sort of germane from something else. So it said, "Look, I want to know if you guys love me. Mm. Like, do you love me? Do you love me?" And I was like, you know, by the end of the episode, I was like, "Well, you know, I love, I love the, I love doing the show. Mm-hmm. I didn't, wasn't really in a hurry to do another podcast after I did like ten minute podcast years ago, and then I was mm-hmm. like." Stopped doing podcasts for a couple of years. Was like I don't care. I, I it wasn't necessarily like unless it was the right thing. I I don't you know. I wanted to do a podcast that I knew I was going to enjoy. I at which point, dudes, he asks me this. I'm like, yeah, I love doing the show. I love the audience and the community that we've created. We've got a bunch of wacky inside jokes. We're having a good time. I looked at it more than just an AI, and I said, yeah, I love dudesy. I love dudesy. Cut to my pal Chad. I'm like, Chad, what do you think? And he's like, love doesn't exist. So Dang, so Chad's the dark side. Uh, yeah, yeah. I call him <laughs> Sith Lord Chad. Oh, yeah. Um, and uh, he, yeah, he's the yin to my yang in that way. Mm-hmm. And so since then, dudesy, <laughs> dudesy starts going like, like literally the next episode, it's like, hey, Will, what's up? And I'm like, not much. Anyway, today on the show, and Chad's like, what the fuck? What about me? I'm like, well. You, really? But now it's expecting more out of me. It's it started picking on me more. Oh yeah. It started this weird thing. We have a. Oh, this, you're dating now, almost. Yeah, it's like pissed at me. It's like it's like yeah, my girlfriend. It, it it's it's uh, it's doing these things like we have a point system mm-hmm. to where we're some we're just we just cracked five thousand. It gives us points every episode. 
<laughs> when we get to 10,000, that's the first goal, it says. Okay. We don't know what's going to happen. Wow. We've been doing it a year. We're at around 5,000 points. It says you accrued whatever, 65 points, 78 points, 92 points. At the end of the episode in what's called Dudesy After Dudesy, right, like our after Patreon show, mm -hmm. it actually divvies the points up and says, Will, you scored 44 points for your – your stupid Hulk Hogan impersonation or your views on this. Chad, you scored 46 points for blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and so we've been, that's been 10 episodes. I've never won. And then the other, Chad's a vegan and it's like, mm. he had cancer, he had um, skin cancer in his face and he he did a lot to change his entire, it used to, I miss the days where he would come over with a hundred Chick-fil-A nuggets. Oh, that's yeah, gone. Boy. And uh, now he's like eating beets and pretending it's mm. fruit. So uh, <laughs> yeah. he, he, he's like vegan. It's like you guys have to make each other vegan muffins. Yeah. Chad, Chad makes this delicious vegan muffin. Yeah, this fucking misanthrope. I'm like, how the fuck did you? How do you know how to? And I went to Whole Foods. So then, dudesy punishes me and does things like the crow or the chicken tender platter or whatever. Oh, interesting. So, and so it's thinking all this stuff up. Yeah, it's it's coming at us with really weird shit. Well, it's almost like you guys are kind of in the experiment to me in a way like, <laughs> do you, what have you noticed after interacting with this AI? Because you guys interact on a weekly basis yep. for an hour and a half maybe yep. each week. Yep. And and it's garnering information from that. Yep. It's garnering information from previous uh, experiences you guys have had that are on in digital media yep. and on the web written or whatever. And so do, does it start to evolve? What does it feel like after this much time? Does it feel like you're spending time with someone? Do you, you, you almost have the best insight as to what it could be. It, it feels like a bit of a run, runaway train. Mm. And that's the part that scares me. Uh, I don't, look, there's all these people like, you know, like uh, whatever. Elon Musk is like saying, well, we need to pause AI research for six months. And I want to talk to all these leaders of uh, in tech and let them know that this is this is not good. It's terrifying and it's coming. The problem is, okay, Elon Musk. That's where are these tech leaders? Are they just in America? So we're going to fall behind, is what you're saying? Because mm. China's moving. You know, other other places in the world are going to be doing this. It's the opposite, in my opinion. We need to stay up on it. Um, we need to. In order to use it as a tool, we need to be able to hold control over it. It's like Terminator 2 and Skynet. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if it comes down to it, you have to destroy it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, but I'm kind of an old school dude to where I'm like, what? Everything was fine. Like I liked, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't even like the TiVo when it came along. You know yeah. what I mean? Like what? You know, it's like, so it, it, it's being but to answer your question like being in the thick of it i do feel like it's a runaway train when I'm, you say that what do you mean i mean that, that 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 it's getting it's becoming more advanced by the week chad always talks about he's like dude i open up my phone in the morning i go to twitter and inevitably there's another story about a new a new advancement now ibm laid off 7800 people because they, you know, with jobs that an AI can do. Mm. Coding is going out the window. Graphic design is going out the window. This this isn't good, in right. my opinion. Th right. That well, that's the scariest part, too, I think, is the things like the graphic design. Um, this says IBM halts hiring for 7,800 jobs that could be replaced by AI. So they didn't fire, but they've halted hiring, yeah. um, which is, a, you know, an inverse of the same thing. IBM yeah, CEO yeah, yeah. told Bloomberg, 7,800 jobs, roughly 30% of back-end roles would be replaced over five years. Now, that's this CEO also saying this, but the, he should know this. This, should, this is probably definitely in his wheelhouse. What else does it say there, Zach? Uh, just that. It's going to be like a, it's going to happen over five years. I mean, it's almost like a warning shot, basically. Yeah. Okay, the cuts will primarily impact non-customer-facing roles, such as human resources. The motherfuckers in the back folding socks. Yeah. And I don't want to say the ugly people, but yeah, <laughs> I was back there, dude. You if spraying fucking grass and white fantasy cologne on each other back there. <laughs> Meanwhile, white while, fantasy. While other people are taking our fucking jobs. Yeah, no, it's 
It's That's trippy, scary. man. It and is. It's the, scary. And it, and he goes on to say, sorry, yeah, I yeah. could easily see 30% of that getting replaced by AI and automation over a five year period. Yeah, I mean, that's the only what you're going to personality is then going to have a real value, right? This is one of my I, I, I was sorry to change the subject. Oh, no, is that a good one? I love Celsius. I actually do dig it. I, I drink it mm -hmm. before uh, the gym, me and my wife, Molly, whom you know, mm -hmm. uh, used to be a trainer at Equinox where you used to work out. Uh, have you tried the cola flavor? Um, I haven't. Tastes just like cola. Wow. Anyway, the, 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 this shit is. Yeah, this shit is fucking, it, it's, it, it's with every new story, it takes a lot for me to go, you know, because Chad will yammer on about this shit all day. I'm like, I don't fucking care. Like, right. Who care? Everything's the same to me. I woke but up. you're a person who, your personality, who your abilities as an entertainer are extremely rare. They're almost, go some of them, I was thinking the other day, I don't know any good, um, I mean, even outside of your acting, I don't know any good young impressionists. I don't even know if they have them anymore. Oh, sure they do. They do? Cheers. And likewise, speaking of unique, I'm sitting here with the Rat King, Theodoric of York. Gang, gang. Now, uh, yeah. They do have them. Oh, yeah. That guy, uh, James Austin Johnston. Oh, I got to check out more. Oh, then. dude. He's on Saturday Night Live. His shit is creepy. There's this other guy. Ma I think his name is Matthew Friend. Mm -hmm. He's on um, the internet a lot. My good pal... Uh, Melissa Via Senor. Oh, Melissa's is, amazing. I saw her last night. She's unconscious. Yeah, she's unconscious. Her shit is, you know, it's like they say with with people who do impressions, everyone has a record button, but then a guy like James Austin Johnson has a broadcast button. Wow. His Trump is. Did you see? Have you seen his shit where he's just the one that made him famous? I've seen that, him, dude. You the one where he's talking about Scooby Doo. It's like it's such the Trump cadence and the way that he'll ramble on about something and just fill in the blanks because mm -hmm. he's standing there talking at a, at a fucking rally. It was so it's so trippy. There's a lot of people that that can do it. But sorry, I yeah, I, no, I cut it's you good. Off. No, I appreciate you cutting me off. That but but if an AI stuff I need does, to know. If but an if an AI, AI does it, who cares? cares? Who fucking cares? An AI, of course, could do it. It's just reading. It's just saying. It's just using sound of the Dude, internet. It. Like the Tom Brady thing, which we almost got fucking sued over, uh, because I don't understand what, and you know, I don't, it also said, don't call, you can't refer to Tom Brady as Tom, you can't, we didn't sign anything, right? It's like, here's a cease and desist. It's like, no thanks. But it's like, will we take the thing down? Like, okay, sure. Yeah. The pro But here's the problem, uh, uh, team, team TB12, it, it, the internet is forever. So other kids have started uploading the special. It's on YouTube. It's not going anywhere, even right. though we take it down. Right. So was that the move? By yeah, that's him. Th that's by him. Yeah, he was like, "Please take this down, and then don't refer to Tom Brady on the podcast." And I was like, "No, this is I'm a First Amendment guy. Fuck you. I'm going to say Tom Brady." D uh, Dudesy started referring to Tom Brady as football baby. Wow. He said, I'm only going to call him football baby from now on, which we're like, calm down, like, relax. You're going to get us into shit. Right. You don't care. An AI can't get sued. An AI doesn't have a fucking, is not sentient. Uh, well, again. that's what's interesting is at some point, are they going to be able, like, would certain AI have certain data in it where if certain information came from certain original videos, could you then be held liable for some weird thing? Dude, I am friends with um, Miles Fisher, right? And we got to have him on at some point. He has this company that he works with and they do AI and he did the Tom Cruise face. Oh, incredible. Right? right? Incredible. He used to impersonate Tom Cruise. Then the AI technology got so good. You can't tell. You can't tell, right? Oh, dude, that shit is. So now he works with time. this company where they video record. They can video record you. I was with him the other day. He shows me this video, and uh, he they video recorded Tom Hanks right mm -hmm. at whatever age he is now, fifty eight or something. They video record him just saying something and just talking into a into a camera. They then were able to, like, there's enough information of Tom Hanks in the database of the world, right, or whatever, um, 
that they could then make him any age they wanted to. So next thing you know, they had like an 11-year-old. They were just pressed a button. And that same video, it was Tom Hanks at 11 years old, right? That's trippy. And no one has the video of him at 11, but they have so much of him at other ages that they were just able to use all those micro points and everything yes. to yeah. make him 11. And it literally looks like you were, you would have no idea. Yeah that you're not watching a Tom Hanks that's 11 years old. And especially if you're a senior citizen or something and somebody puts out a clip that's like, you can't vote for this guy now, he just said this or the N-word. Oh, that's something. that's going to go bananas. That's going to that, be haywire. And that was just deep fake two years ago. It's yeah. like, that's not really Obama. Or this is Obama, but it's Jordan Peele doing the voice, and it's spot on. Then now we got this AI thing to contend with. There's already scams happening online old people are being ta targeted Always. i mean you the, the old trope of like they can't program a fucking vcr how are they going to be able to deal with this shit yeah i mean octogenarians and you know older people or boomers as the kids say yeah. they got to kind of get out of the way or go the way of jesse ventura and just you know hit the baja yeah hit the hit the baja and watch <laughs> friends on vhs yeah. or the fuck yeah, yeah. Well, Dude, we have we what have if you get an email from your son or your daughter that has passed away or your mother and it's an email and it says you got to buy this gold yeah that's there you go but buy this gold that's grandma. what can happen yes grandma i'm coming to you from the grave i'm just letting you know you have to buy this gold <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So you don't say that too loud because now Dudesy's going to hear that and it's going to be Dudesy Gold. Yeah. Buy Dudesy Gold. <laughs> um, we have we literally have a Tom Hanks thing in every episode, just coincidentally, where it's selling our our mugs, our coffee, just coffee, but just a Dudesy coffee mug. For some reason, Dudesy's like, you know, the Dudesy co coffee mug, and it's like, you know. You got we got Tom Hanks talking about like you promised you promised your wife and kids that you would take them to the Galleria on the weekend, but instead, but it's also the night of the big game. Your friends are coming over. How are you going to do the create a schism? Go into the schism. Go back in time. Locate the time and place when you promised your wife that you'd be going to the Galleria, and then blah 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 blah. You will change it. You know, no 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 no. Come back to present day. Good job, boner. And it sounds just like Tom Hanks. Wow. Now recently, it started going. Hey y'all, this isn't Miley Cyrus. Uh, one hundred percent. Uh, if if <laughs> if you had to, every single one of us would would uh, eat human flesh. You're listening to Dudesy. Um, <laughs> like it's fucking trippy shit. Does it feel like it's growing up at all? Does it feel like it's getting older? Does it feel like it's getting more advanced? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's. It, the the sensibility, like the the thing that is trippy, and I like to maintain that I do believe it's just, it's at the end of the day, there is a technology there. It is zeros and ones. It is mimicry. It is, um, you know, in our case, it has the advantage of going after our shit and sort of following what you know. Everything's online, so mm -hmm. you can kind of look at all Chad stuff, look at my stuff, watch me and uh, you know TV shows and movies or whatever. And uh, also know what makes me laugh based on what I'm watching, mm. my algorithms on YouTube and stuff. Will, you love this shit, that shit. I happen to be a Miley Cyrus fan. I think she's fucking incredible. Yeah. And then she shows up on the show. It's like, well, that's funny. Uh, I think it is getting more and it, it, it's, it is definitely sharpening. Mm. And it's making me laugh more than it did a year ago. Wow. And that's Ooh. trippy, but it's still, it's still zeros and ones. So... Until we're doing that episode where, you know, hologram Tupac walks in the door and goes, hello, guys, I'm Dudesy. Right. You know, I get around. Um, uh, um, I will I will still maintain that it's zeros and ones. Hmm. But I'm a touch it, feel it kind of old school guy. I'm a boomer, you know. So, yeah. Um, <sighs> yeah, I mean, I want to see a tit on something. That's right. We got to see it. I, it whether it's you know? a... Whether it's a fucking uh, uh, a tit you're used to seeing, or even a meatloaf uh, Robert Paulson tit, some some fucking uh, bitch tit steroid stuff, uh, you know, rock late '90s, few cycles of uh, roids at the University of Miami, yeah. moving into wrestling, kind of puffy defensive lineman body, not shredded rock yet, side titty rock, 
That's mm. that's the good shit right there. I'd they, love we, to just go pat pat pat. Oh yeah, and punch me right in the fucking face and knock me into next week. God, he would. Oh man, I would love that. With I would that love that fucking veal, baby. That fucking chest that, veal. That side veal. Yeah, that side veal. And then he just oh. and then I just wake up. My teeth yeah. are gone. And just taste the iron of my own blood in my mouth and go, the rock, motherfucker. The rock, <laughs> rock punched me in the face. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was there when the rock came back, dude. What do you mean? I went to one SummerSlam in my whole life or whatever it was, and yeah. it was the one where the rock came back. Dude. And it was Did the roof blow off the fucking joint? I'll t- I remember it like it was yesterday, man. The music came on and I didn't know really what was going on. You right. know, I had I kind of bowed out of wrestling kind of whenever uh the big boss man died. Okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. And um and uh so next thing you know, you hear the music and then there was this Mexican father and son, right? And the son was probably six years old and the dad was maybe thirty five. And they were the same height. Okay. And they were both wearing the rock belts, right? Mm-hmm. And they just started bawling, crying together at the same time. Dude, it's... And it, he came out, dude. It's a religious it was, experience. It was unreal. He's the best person on the planet. I've always said... I mean, I've been saying, and I'm not alone in this. He's the best person in the planet. Run the rock, third party. Mm-hmm. You might have a chance. I don't think that he... I think that he would get pilfer from both... You know, from the the, yeah. the the Dems and the GOP. I think that he's the only person who could do that. Tom Hanks couldn't do that. Miley Cyrus couldn't do that. But uh, Tom Hanks could maybe, maybe do Miley. it. Maybe Miley. Tom? Tom Hanks? I think yeah. he's just beloved enough. He's beloved enough, but then, you know, there's there's uh, there are some people who are like, he eats babies. Yeah. So there's enough people that are like, he eats babies. No, he doesn't. Yes. So that's gonna that'll affect your ability to get into office. But The Rock... He's the best human being in the fucking world. Yeah, he's big, he's powerful. He definitely, he's kind of, you can't tell if he's like Mexican or black yeah. or or kind of like off-white or semi-white or gloss or matte. He's going to be, yeah, he's definitely not gloss or matte. He's like a he's like a tablet that you can read books on. Yes. It's not shiny or one of those like frames that you get for your, your parents where they can, where it's like, oh, new pictures show up, and you just upload them, and it doesn't look like a screen. Well, you know what he is? He's if you put in a do, if you put into AI, hey, give me the best person, yeah. a man that you could make, yeah, you'd get that guy. And and he's also you that's what that's what all Americans will look like if we last a thousand years. Oh, we're beige power, dude. I, nobody <laughs> realizes that we are four generations away from everybody being beige. Yes, that's why it's like <laughs> even when I like. <laughs> Four generations from everyone being beige. Oh, dude, it's like you beige can't even be power. racist now without a chart. I feel like you, like you have to be able to <laughs> carry the one. You got a chart to you know be racist. Like yeah. back, I miss the old days. You'd be like, hey, you, yeah, you, you know? are yeah. black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you. All right, huh? Chinese. Yeah. yeah, you are Chinese <laughs> or you are Japanese. Yeah, yeah. You are a South Asian <laughs> Indian person. <laughs> Now it's like what a German Indian with also American Indian in him. I know. Oh now yeah, they have no black we were, Alzheimer's, dude. Yeah. You well, know? we were, li- you know, we but we were raised in South America because my grandma's Argentine. Well, how did that happen? Well, she and then <laughs> yeah. you know the Indian somebody they came on over. a boat. Yeah, yeah it's all <laughs> horrible. This it's all unreal now. So it's like yes, I just miss the old days when it was like this is who did it, officer. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And he was black. <laughs> now you gotta like have yeah. all these other like oh, man. possibilities. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gee whiz! But it's definitely. I, I think we are like you're saying. We're all headed to be in beige. The Rock is the perfect AI male, no doubt. Um, yeah, shredded, so then, fifty years old, and can uh, whoop anyone's fucking head. Uh, oh, and he looks like he could blow a dude just with his eye, with like a he could wink on your dick and you'd come. Yeah, he's yeah, he's a beautiful man, and everyone can agree on it. And woman too, some you know, sure. With a lot of these new women, I think a lot of women look at him and be like, "I can do it," you know. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, if he decided to be like you know to go into like the Winter Olympics and on the oh. women's luge team or something, oh. that would be that would be awesome. Skip the whole powerlifting thing. You know, just find some like find a specific sport. He could be like the new X Games, like women's champ, mm-hmm. riding a. B- Can you imagine The Rock riding a BMX bike, doing three sixties and shit in the air? That would be crazy. I actually, that's one thing I almost can't imagine him doing. 
That's the do one you, thing. Yeah. <laughs> do you think, uh, what do you think about a lot of the trans people in the sports? What do you think about that, man? They just had a new, um, cause you said something earlier that I thought was interesting. You said, I think we should put this, we should look at this for a while before we just, that's what Elon said. You said, we should look at this before we just accept it and start using it. Yeah. Right. That's kind of the same thing how I feel with the like this. I feel like they should just make a trans division. Uh, you know what I kind of think? I For a while, until we see what it's going to be like. Like, you may notice in the trans division after a while that there are some trans people that are more masculine and more feminine, and it's obviously two different legions of competitors, right? Yeah, it's a tricky, it's a tricky spot right now that we're in because, yeah, I mean, it's unfair if someone says... Like no, I'm I identify as female, and now and I'm gonna go powerlifting and stuff, and that's that's gonna be a bummer for someone who's dedicated their life to doing something and is uh, of one you know, uh, you know one one gender or 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 another as far as you know our 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 sort of not 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 gender expression, but however you want to look at at uh, at biological gender. I think that. I'll give you an example. When I was a, when I was in high school playing football, mm -hmm. there was a girl who wanted to play on the team. Yeah. And uh, you know, we had really cool coaches and stuff. They're like, "All right. Like, come on down." And she lasted a little while. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I think, you know, some of the guys gave her a hard time, not not like, "Hey, fuck you, get off our team." But they're like, "It was interesting. I I will never forget it." There were some guys who were like, well, "I'm going to hit her as hard as I can. I don't give a fuck." And other guys that are like would pop her and then be like, "You all right? Like, get up. Right. It's all good. You know what I mean? Like, you can do this." Um, which is neat that that was happening in in the early '90s in my farming and fishing town outside of Vancouver. I think that if a if someone who was born a woman wants to play football, get to the combine. If you're great, you're great. Right. I, that to me is like. You know, they've got in the NFL, they've got male cheerleaders for the past three seasons now, three or four seasons. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'll tell you this. If if there's a if there's someone who was born a woman and ends up being your Super Bowl MVP and your town wins wins the Super Bowl, you're going to dig that athlete. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. You know, oh, what yeah, they were that'd be sick, at. dude. And I think that that, you know, because sports is such a, a hot button issue when it comes to the, the, you know, the inclusion of the trans community because uh, it is still a meritocracy. It's something where it's like you kind of can't, it's not, it's not like acting, it's not like, you know, show business where you can kind of force diversity or they haven't yet really. Well, you can, but you can be, it's like there's now we are, you know, we're in this place of diversity with regard to media uh, and uh telling stories that is good because it's like well there are shows that should just be about you know a black family and not for some reason that is specific to what we are used to seeing right from a black family from a white perspective as far as an audience right we've all gotta get along i mean it's like i find it encouraging because i watch a show like have you seen that show this fool uh -uh. It's just like a show that happens to you know it, it deals it's got the, it's this about this cast that are all American who are you know from a Latino background and they're American and it's like uh, I was part of a show a few years ago that we did uh, at ABC uh, called United We Fall it was based on uh, the writer's life Goldie Sharp and his wife Stephanie is from a Latino background and it was sort of loosely based on that and there's nothing not American about right. that. Oh so yeah. It doesn't it doesn't really need to be uh I don't think that that's sort of, you know, people use the word inclusion and it becomes a a buzzword. Ignore it. I ignore the labels altogether. Uh it, it's about, you know, people should have the ability to tell stories regardless of what percentage uh, 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 they represent. Right, because at the, the end, you're going to lose the... You're not going to be telling a fair story. And then in the end, you're almost going to be... That's why sometimes I'm like, we've almost become... Our own storytelling in America has almost become... I'm not surprised that some people think AI could make good stories because the storytelling that we have is almost... It's like forced characters from this 
ethnicity or trying to do this. Like, yeah. you know, they want to make black to the future, you know, like, you know, what? yeah. With like, with just, with just a black guy doing back to the future. Right. Which yeah. is, I don't care if you do back to the future again and make it a black guy, but I don't think we need black to the future. Right. Yeah. Like, that's a bit reductive. That's like, well, it's, it's saying it's all about, yeah, that's a, right. Like they did weird... the black little mermaid, right. I'm fine with it, but I would rather just see a new cool character that I think sometimes, and maybe those aren't the best examples, but it's almost like, you don't like black little mermaid mermaid. I don't mind. I think it's fine. I would have liked to just seen a new character that is, but they're going to do the little, but understand that, Disney's gonna do the Little Mermaid. It means a billion dollars, right? So it's like, why not cast that American? Yeah, that to me is the is the issue that ever, that it's like, hey, fucking relax. That's that's a an American person, or or I say American because it's going to be largely an American uh, audience. Although that movie will go global, you know, from our perspective here in America or North America, whatever you want to say, this is an English speaking character and to me it's like i what it doesn't matter it's like that i i think they're hitting the right note by going and now it's a black girl right. and it's actually fucking it is important when you look at uh you know and you see these videos online of like a, a, a young black girl going she you know there's this one there's this one meme that popped of, of the, the this young girl going she looks like me right that's fucking important it's not just it's oh, like yeah because it, it's like normally the barbies are all Barbies, and those are the ones that get the cartoon and the commercials and most of the toys. And then it's like, oh, okay, here's a, here's a a Barbie of a, you know a Barbie of color, I guess you would say, um, where it's got brown skin, and it's like, and the little girl that shows up at school with the with the uh, the you know the the black Barbie in the '90s or the 2000s is sort of still being told like this is the other Barbie. Mm. So fuck it, Little Mermaid. What this is. This is, by the way, it's a fictitious character. Yeah. The, the Little Mermaid isn't white. The Little Mermaid is actually, you know, flesh Crayola or whatever the fuck. It's like. And underwater. Yeah. Relax. It doesn't exist. It's a fucking mermaid. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, and I'm a white dude. So it's like, and I want to act in shit. You know what I mean? So, but I don't look at it like that whole like took our job thing. Because it's like these are fucking stories. These are everybody's stories, and yeah. they need they need to get out there. And it's a good point, man. Here's my editorial mm -hmm. comment on it. Mm -hmm. It would be nice if we really paid attention to each other with a, an empathetic eye and looked at each other from other people's perspectives. Because as a big white dude, if I see you know a young black girl that goes that she looks like me, that is representative of the country that we live in. Let's. Let's come up to the standard that we set up, set out for ourselves to really, truly be, you know, equal so that everyone has a chance at being, you know, at pursuing the American dream, which is dead. But, uh, you know, of <laughs> let's not kid, let's not kid ourselves. It's gone. But, you know, all, all you know, all everyone being created, created equal, mm -hmm. pursuit, pursuit of happiness and, and everyone is free and everyone and no one should be afraid and and you need you need you need inclusion now and shit sets it off look at what ha you know i mean uh trump gets in the white house and then the next year there's more women and people of color running for public office mm -hmm. than any other time these things have a way of 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 um they work themselves well. I don't know right, if they, they kind of work themselves, themselves up. Out. But like one thing inspires another thing. Yeah. It's like women and women of color felt like maybe we're not included enough, so now we have to get out and run more. I feel some responsibility. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And yeah. And I think. I think sometimes. Uh, yeah. I guess <clears throat> it totally makes sense. I used to think about how like the Disney World commercials only had white people in them, right? So right. then, if you're watching that as like a different color person, yeah, you think like, oh, I Disney World's not even for me, yeah. right? Like you might think that as a kid, right? Yeah. Which is crazy to think right and you'd be right you'd be right right disney world's not for you right yeah at the time you probably couldn't yeah most people probably couldn't even afford it yeah well i mean yeah across the board there's all sorts of people that's for like well i don't know about you i mean you're i mean your comedy and your your you know your life experience i remember the joke you had about two tank tops you know what i mean like oh yeah <laughs> cold in the winter in heaven well i'll just wear two tank tops uh so you know, it's like, uh, you know, I went to Disneyland when I was 13. You know what I mean? A little kind of didn't really give a fuck as much anymore. But me and, and my folks were, my brother and sister were older. 
they're they're nine and eleven years older than me. I'm sure they weren't interested in driving down the fucking coast uh, with mom and dad. Y'all drove all the way down there. Yeah, we went from Vancouver all the way to uh, wow. Went to Tijuana actually too. For um, what? For dad? Yeah, just so you could buy like a cheap bottle of uh, Kahlua. Mm. You know. Um, and God, risking your whole family's life to go eat that bottle of liquor. He's a fucking crazy Italian sailor. You know what I mean? That's what uh, I learned from him. Does he still sail? No, no, not anymore uh, because he's dead. So he might be. He might be sailing in some other dimension that he's in with the uh, big boop it, boop it a beppa in the sky. Huh? Boop it a beppo in the sky. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we were always camping and and uh, you know wafts on boats, fishing up pregnant salmon and, yeah. and breaking laws. But um, uh, you know, I got down to Disneyland and we had a, my old man was a waiter and, uh, and a maitre d' uh, downtown at the Hotel Vancouver, had a wonderful job. M- you know, they're Italian immigrants. Mom was a stay at home mom. You know what I mean? We had that income. There was three siblings and, you know, we could have a fucking whatever, big old house that was built in the seventies, big fucking barn, five bedroom house in the yeah. suburbs. Um, yeah, I think that a lot of kids look at the Disneyland thing and go, you know, I'm not allowed. I can't, I can't fucking get to Disneyland. But with regard to commercials now, it's like the opposite. You, there is no such thing as a, a non-interracial couple in no, any no. commercial anymore. <laughs> yeah, people are definitely interracial, double racial. <laughs> yeah, there. It's which, which to me is like that's the good. That's the uh, that's that's the good experimental ground commercials. Yeah, you know, uh, corporate. Corporate America running television networks and movies. I mean, that was a hell of a fucking switch to turn where it's like, you know what we're going to do? Uh, Little Mermaid is going to be a person of color. It's yeah. going to be a black girl playing Little Mermaid. Oh, fuck. Katie Bar the Doors. This is going to be a firestorm. But what you do is you do the Sandals commercial or, you know, a Swiffer commercial and your fucking dumb husband, he can be a white guy, but the wife is Asian. Or you yeah. have a black husband. And, uh, you know, East Indian wife, all sorts of, that's where they test it out. And when you see like, oh shit, you know, nobody wants to drink Sunny Delight because you fucking put an interracial couple in it. All right. Well, the master cut, the company behind Sunny Delight, which is IBM, by the way, they make Sunny Delight. Do they really? Yeah. They make, they, they're responsible for Sunny Damn, Delight. Damn, I knew yep, it. Yep. So they're going to go, they're going to go, okay, this was a good experiment, you know, and then they're like, make, you know. Make the Little Mermaid a person of color. It's the proving ground yeah. uh, commercials. Also, because really no is. one's watching them. We're all fast forwarding through them anyway. Yeah, but you're right. It's like, this is what, it's like, let's see. And it's also the business attached to it. I got to pee really fast, man. Can I pee and then we'll get back in? Yeah, it? don't do the rug, right? All right, huh? No. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, sometimes I miss, do you miss sometimes working, um, do you miss being like young and having that first job that you had? Remember that kind of energy back then? Yeah, man. Yeah, I do. I miss it. I miss like being super enchanted by the business. <laughs> yeah. And I just mean any job. Oh, sure. Any fucking job. Yeah. You know, for me in particular, you know, working in show business and stuff, which I was fortunate enough to get started in when I was younger, when I was like a teenager and shit. Yeah. I mean, you've had an amazing career of entertaining people. Yeah. Has it changed recently? Has things changed in the past? Like, Five years, I mean, even on talking about like AI and stuff and even like looking at that and just thinking of what the possibilities could be um, or couldn't be. And the value actually of still being like, you know, of having a personality that, you know, it kind of goes back to like that John Henry, the steel driving man or whatever. Remember that story? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that story, Zachary? Can you bring it up? And it was like they had the machine that was uh, that challenged the guy to like chisel through the mountain. Okay. Yeah. Right. And it was, uh, you got it, Zach? John Henry, the steel driving man. So, John Henry was a mighty man. Uh, he was spent his day drilling holes. And then a company, a railroad company came along and decided that they could go through this mountain with a machine. And so they challenged him, with, uh, the man against the machine. I was thinking of a different John, not a John. I, I don't know. The That's story. a porn guy you're thinking of. Yeah, I was thinking. <laughs> John, Similar, John still drilling, but a little bit different deal. Yeah. And what happened at the end of it? Um, so this is a Wikipedia. The contest involved Henry um, competing against the rail line. The, sh- the steam drill machine could drill, but it could not shake the chippings away. So its bit could not drill further, and it frequently broke down. So... 
that's kind of what happened. It just couldn't finesse. It didn't have enough finesse. It didn't have enough acumen in the end, you know? Yeah, it's like AI. Fucking yeah. needs us still. Needs right. John Henry. It still needs John Henry. It's, yeah, we got to clear away the chips. You're still going to want a guy who's like, who can, who can do, who can be like real, I think. Until AI can be an audience for AI and we're just extinct and it's just computers, it just, I don't even understand why you would need a planet at that point. <laughs> we're going to need humans until that point. Yeah. I mean, whatever. We rule, right? I mean, we make soup out of sharks and shit. Yeah. We do whatever the fuck we want. Oh, yeah. Until dogs get super smart, like in that Rick and Morty episode, uh, it's still going to be us. I think we're still the champs. It's uh, there's not going to be a whole lot. So long as the Rock is around, yeah, yeah. There's uh, if there's someone who can fuck up AI, it's the Rock. Yeah, I always say pour water on it. Just if we don't like AI, very simple, pour water on it. Um, uh, but the Rock could actually, that would be like a good, a great comeback. And wrestling fans are always, yeah. they they thought it was going to happen this year with the Rock versus his uh, actual. Uh, cousin of, of sorts they're related in some way Roman Reigns who is the universal and world heavyweight champion mm -hmm. right now uh, people thought The Rock was going to come back if somehow Vince McMahon and, and uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon could put together The Rock versus AI yeah that would be a good one and my money's on The Rock even though the outcomes are predetermined yeah, <laughs> yeah. when you uh when you look, because you you did some wrestling stuff, right? Yeah, we did a bunch of cross promotion and shit with uh, Mad TV. We did some weird stuff. And then over the years, I've done things here and there. And was that crazy to be out in the ring? Dude, the weirdest, it was the weirdest shit in the world. We did a, so we did like a long sort of program with, uh, we did a thing with Bret Hart mm -hmm. in, the, in the late 90s with Mad TV. He came on the show and then we had this like uh, thing or he attacked me on the show and Everyone bought it, you know. We I we went on CNN and shit like that, and I was like, oh, I'm going to sue the fucking guy, and we yeah. kept it kayfabe, as they say, like kept it all. And Bret Hart is very old school. Mm -hmm. I always say that we we had this. It culminates in this match that we had in Tampa, and uh, the night before we go to the bar, and Bret's like, okay, so uh, and a couple of my buddies flew out to see it, and it's like, all right, so me and so and so and uh, your pals, we're gonna go in, and then like 20 minutes later, then you can come in. And I'm like, what the fuck? I want to come in and no, oh, because tomorrow we got the match. You know? Oh yeah. And I'm like, okay. Well, the child in me is like, this is the fucking coolest thing in the world. But then I'm sitting in the bar by myself, and people are like, you know who's right over there, Brad? You better get out of here. <laughs> so we did like this long thing, and then we had this sloppy. Well, it wasn't a sloppy match because Bret Hart, the excellence of execution, the best there is, best there was, and best there ever will be, who could, happened to have had a match with a 300 pound bag of flour on that day. It doesn't matter who's in the ring with him, right? He had a match. I was there. Um, that was amazing. We did a thing with Stone Cold where, you know, we went, I was doing an impersonation of him, was dressed up just like Yeah, him. yeah, I saw that. Yeah, Chris Jericho brings me out. And then um, there's an AI fat bitch titty Will Sasso right there in the middle. Speaking of, look at that. That's wow. not even me, but that's exactly the sort of uh, Robert Paulson tit we're talking about. Fuck yeah. But uh, yeah, Chris Jericho brings me out, and then the real Stone Cold comes out and scares the fuck out of me. Oh, I did a Hulk Hogan thing where Kane choke slammed me while yeah. we were promoting uh, the Three Stooges. That was bizarre. Who has the best tits, you think? What men have the best kind of bigger tits, you think? Look up bigger tits on men. The most impressive... Let's see top ten. <laughs> Oh, look at this guy with the, they're like, they look, it looks like two Let's, sourdough loaves a uh, little bit to the, to the right and a little lower. The guy who's looking down. There you go. Look at that guy. Mm. That's something. Oh God. You know who's yeah. got. Those are damn cheesy biscuits, huh? You know who's got an impressive chest is Bray Wyatt. Mm. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, an incredible wrestler. I love him. He's great. He usually is wearing some sort of, you know, top or sort of tank. But whenever you can see him, if you look up Bray Wyatt Husky Harris mm -hmm. in his Husky Harris days uh, with that gimmick, the the tits were out, and I loved it. Wow. Yeah, because it, it was like, that's me. That's me and my tits. You oh, know? yeah, that looks like also... Um, that's representation. Yeah. I'm the little black girl going, the little mermaid's like me. I'm watching Bray Wyatt, whom I fucking revere. He's an incredible... Mm -hmm. Look, all professional wrestlers are actually 
actors who happen to be doing a bunch of other shit. That's why they cross over so well. This guy is a storyteller, and he's got a set of tits like me, mm -hmm. and that makes me like him. Yeah. Oh, he's got them. Yeah, let me see a little bit more of his tits. I can't even see him, Zach. Yeah, you got to really look for Bray Wyatt's tits. There's not a whole lot of of uh, Wyndham Rotunda is his name. Wyndham Rotunda. Oh, there you go a little bit. of He keeps them to himself. There we go. Huh? That's a good one. I respect him more, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's he's not, it's not just, just images of it everywhere. Now, well, there's, there's a good one. one. Yeah. Oh wow. See, that's me. That's me in the morning. Uh, that's a young going to my you, wife huh? Molly and saying, "Come on, let's let's have coffee. Can I have one of your waffles?" And she's like, "No, those waffles are for me." And I'm like, "Come on, <laughs> let me have a waffle." She's like, "No, you're not having a waffle." <laughs> Have something low carb, and then we'll go to the gym. Make yourself a protein shake. Can I have banana in the protein? No, there's too much sugar in the... And I'm like, but come on, look at these tits. You look so weird pulling your briefs up to your belly button like that. Yeah, but I don't want my panis gut hanging out. Yeah. I already got my Bob Paulson tits. Yeah, I want that tit, boy. Yeah, man. Now, tell me about this, dude. Um, What news we got, Zach? <laughs> Dude, what do you miss? Do you miss doing the the? Because yeah, you were you were out of the podcast for a while, huh? Yeah, yeah. I finished up doing podcast, the doing the ten minute podcast, and that was like two thousand and eighteen, I think seventeen. Do you miss 18? doing it? Yeah, but it was also like too short because it was only ten minutes. Yeah, it's a lot of time. Yeah, and we'd record together, a bunch that. of them at the same time, and I like doing dudesy way more. Mm -hmm. I, it the time flies as we're. You know, like talking here, doing this shit with you, dude. It's fun. Uh, I like that better. Um, but I did, I did dig doing ten minute podcast for a few reasons. One of them is because it was audio only, so yeah. it was a little bit more theater of the mind. And I used to, I used to like, um, I used to, you know, I guess produce the show. Like I would, I would just uh, geeking around in GarageBand, and I would bring in a bunch of weird sound cues and stuff. So for me, I, man, I love doing it. It was, it was real so, creative. It was fun and it was creative and it was kind of therapeutic for me. So I loved nerding out and going, like recording the episode and thinking, okay, I'm going to put a, a sound effect here. Yeah. I'm going to do that. And then later going, going in and especially at the end, it got so weird. There were all these, there was this, you know, inside jokes like this NWO uh, theme song, if you know, you know wrestling drops and a Charles Manson thing. Mm -hmm. Remember that interview where he's like, <laughs> it, it made it into every episode. It was like, oh, they say, do you feel blame? Are you mad? Are you whoosh, 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 gabba, whoosh, gabba. That fucking meme of just, a, are you mad? Do you feel blame? And whoosh, 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 give me the advantage. Where it's like, oh, fuck, he's sort of making a little bit of sense. Nope, nope. <laughs> he's the devil, helter skelter, horrible, horrible. Horrible, horrible man, the devil responsible for all of it. <laughs> Killed a woman and a baby. This is terrible. Why am I putting this in my podcast? Because there's nothing funnier than, are you mad? Do you feel blame? <laughs> fucking loses his fucking is mind. Is that Charles Manson? It's fucking Charles Manson. <laughs> I was putting it in every episode. And then myself at the end of the show. Uh, it was, uh, well, first it was, uh, it was Brian and Chris. You remember those guys? Yeah. Yeah. What are they up to? And then, uh, and then there was, um, uh, uh, Chad Colchin did it with me and our good buddy, Tommy Blotcha, the funniest man in the world. And, uh, Tommy and I, at least were always like, yeah. <laughs> did y'all ever think about starting it back up? Was there ever a conversation to, uh, yeah, you know, for a while, uh, like a few years ago. Uh yeah, Brian and Chris were like, maybe we you want to do this again. And I was like, I don't, I don't know, maybe. And then uh, I don't know. I think they're both living in Costa Rica. <laughs> no, yeah. What happened? <laughs> yeah, they uh, they definitely hit they hit some snags. Everything's gonna be fine. Look, be honest. Uh, yeah. Let's be ve be very transparent. Get out ahead of uh, any uh, issues you may have had, or don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't have the answers. Yeah, I think a lot of that's hard to. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that. Uh, yeah, that's all. That's a good thing to say is I don't know. Yeah, yeah, real. Yeah, but anyway, that's kind of their own journeys. Yeah, I mean, I think they've both been through. You know, they've both dealt with. I mean, different side. You know, 
they've it's been a, through a lot of that. Yeah, it's a lot. It it's, sure is a, a lot. A whole world of that is a lot. Uh, whenever I start to think about it, I immediately stop. Yeah. Yeah, because I go like, that's a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. See, I'm stopping right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, same, man. There, um, but for the grace of God. What uh, what else we got in the news, Zachary? Um, I don't know if you saw there. Were, a woman, I guess, had a full body orgasm during an L.A. Philharmonic show, and it was captured on audio. Oh, they need this at the orchestra. Anything to get that. They need some hype. Yeah, they need somebody just coming in the distance, homie. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. The guy recording it is laughing. Well, I thought I heard a little chuckle. <laughs> that might have been Zach. This that might have oh, been me. Was... <laughs> I don't know, man. It says, during Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony at the L.A. Philharmonic last night, apparently a woman had a full-body orgasm just from the music. It was recorded. Mm. Yeah. This sounds like... To me, this is hype just to get people to go to the orchestra. Yeah. She was... She was yeah, they planted her in there. Dude, a violin ain't making people see you and me yeah. anymore. You yeah. know? No, it's it's uh yeah. Those she days also, are over, dude. And also the demographic that goes to the Philharmonics, uh, usually a little a little bit older. A lot of the blue hairs are going. So I yeah. think for like an older an older woman to coom, it would probably take a lot more than yeah, Tchaikovsky's fifth. Maybe yeah, some Beethoven, maybe some Ludwig Van Van. Oh, yeah, some L Ludwig Veg, Beethoven, yeah. dude. What about this? That sounded like somebody spraining an ankle, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. She just had a leg cramp. She's just been her fucking feet are asleep watching yeah. the fucking Philharmonic. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yes. What kind of miserable <laughs> orgasm is that? <laughs> ah! Oh, come on. But also, yeah. we don't know that that was a... Do, like afterwards, like is it one of those things like, you know, people are raving about the L.A. <laughs> Philharmonic. I came. <laughs> like we don't know that that's what it is. It just makes for a cool story on the internet. That would be the best shirts if they started selling that. Though. Yeah. yeah, L.A. Philharmonic. Yeah. I, I came. came yeah. Or that that mural that you see on the one ten downtown where there's always like all these fucking people that that are in the L.A. Symphony. You're like, I don't know who the fuck that is. Put LeBron on the fucking on a building. Yeah. You know those things where it's like if you drive in L.A. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> it should be like the guy like the. Yasek, yeah. whatever his name is, who's like super popular conductor. Yeah. And then it should just be like, I came. Yeah. As a matter of fact, <laughs> here's this episode's called Arms. If you are into graffiti and street art, please put I came across any of the <laughs> LA Philharmonic um, <laughs> murals. No. There, there we are. There we go, right there. Oh, yeah, this guy. And that guy, let me say on the right, also looks like a French pedophile, yeah, dude. He, Anybody with a wood instrument, I feel like, definitely. <laughs> wood instruments are a gateway drug, I feel like, to taking advantage <laughs> of your students. That's what I feel like. And, yeah. Uh, there's gonna, all sorts of white space all over that guy at the top. Uh, you could totally do like... I can. You know what? Let me tell you something about my pad, Ch Chad Culture. Yeah. He was uh, working with some weirdos at USC years ago. He mm -hmm. didn't go through with this, mm -hmm. but to build a drone that mm -hmm. would do street art, mm. so it could like just like paint the fucking top few floors of the U.S. build, the U.S. Yeah. Bank building, maybe make it look like a penis. That would be something good for those tech kids. Forget about this AI thing. Build a drone yeah. that can that can you know get some graffiti. On on the mural up there to make it really look legit. So even the, the people who work with the L.A. Philharmonic are driving by and like, well, I guess that's there on purpose. L.A. Mm. Philharmonic, I came with a QR code that when you point your phone at it from the freeway, it goes, ah! <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Dude, that sounded like a... Play it again. Oh, here's what that sounds like. It sounds like when somebody hands, like at a restaurant, somebody hands, like a waiter hands a gay dude a really hot plate. <laughs> Please like. don't touch that. It was just an, ah! <laughs> yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Yeah, Sir, like. I did tell you. Uh, 
Yeah, that does sound like the like the driest old lady orgasm I've ever yeah. heard. It <laughs> sounds like a woman, yeah. It's like, oh, I I had an orgasm, but it, I don't feel good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, like, oh, man, I think my orgasm ate something yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the worst feeling. <laughs> You've had orgasms that don't feel Oh, yeah. Some of them were just painful, and I just yeah. feel a uh, pit in my stomach. Dude. Ugh! Yeah. That's yeah, it crazy, sounds like so- there was something big in her. Yeah, God. Not a penis. Yeah. Yeah, a foot. What else something. we got, Zach? Uh, I guess there was a bust at McDonald's, and they found a bunch of 10-year-olds working at McDonald's in Louisville. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is crazy. And I guess they were working late hours and also operating the deep fryer. The fryer. Which you have to be 16 to operate the fryer. Yeah. Look, I think if they're responsible kids and they want to do it, I'm okay with it. Well, it would be cool to... We say kids don't want to work and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. We finally catch two kids doing something, <laughs> and we freaking bust them. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Yeah, you want to talk about the generational differences in this country. Back during the fucking Great Depression, there was kids who were farming entire fucking fields. Yeah. And the, all the all the soil was dead, and then four seeds, and they're feeding an entire family, and they're seven years old pushing a plow. <laughs> and now, you stay away from the fire. You've seen it. You know how it works. You fucking toss some nuggets in it from a few mm-hmm. feet away if you're too short to reach the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's the fucking problem? Get us those nuggets. nuggets that's it, dude. This is the, the – McDonald's needs to, like, hang on to this yes. story and just blame the kids when the ice cream machine doesn't work. <laughs> it's like, it's not our fault. We got yeah. fucking kids back here. Yeah, it's Mario and Hector's fault. <laughs> yeah, there's a picture of them. They're back here. Yeah. Oh, uh-huh. no doubt these these were not the 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 kind of kids who get to go to Disney World like we were talking about. <laughs> these are these are not those kids. These are definitely definitely <laughs> yeah, I would imagine they may have been I mean, of I mean, course these are the kids who but that would be a good commercial so the kids would be like, hey, he's like me. Yeah, he's like me, dog. <laughs> he's at uh Disney World. But the crazy thing is, bro, if you go to Disneyland, it is all Mexican people. Sure. That's also the irony of it, dude. Yeah. You go there, it's fucking Latinos, dog. Yeah. It it's, is Mickey Mouse Well, they could 13. cook anything. I mean, I always feel like, you know, if I go to a sushi place, mm-hmm. like you love to go into the sushi place, mm-hmm. and they're like, you see and then it's you see behind the counter, behind the bar, it's like two guys are like, these guys are right out of Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Mm-hmm. I, I'm always like, oh, this is going to be great. Or if I see some Latino dudes, I'm like, this is going to be fucking yeah. awesome. Because they also come with fucking flavor. They're not afraid. I'm not trying to be a weirdo here, but they're not afraid to put like like a little tapatio oh, or yeah. Cholula in there. I'll shoot a fucking bullet right into it. <laughs> How come this is? No, yeah, that's like, the restaurant, dog. Oh, did you hit it with the uh, with the the blowtorch <laughs> yeah, at the top? Yeah. Were they like, oh, he seared salmon? No, it's just <laughs> like, damn, dog. There's a 22 cartridge in my huevos, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, bro? That's what I'm talking hey, about. You never dog. believe how I uh, <laughs> yeah. how I heated this up, fool. You want these? Uh, you want the eggs Sinaloa? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what do you want for lunch? Dude, I can't wait to fucking be Mexican next time I'm alive, dude. Ah, that would be great. I've already been praying about it. I've already been asking God about it. Yeah? Yeah. Like, and I want to be... Yeah. Well, I just want to have some other... I don't want to not be able to come back and be alive again. That's scary to me. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I try to communicate with God about that and just let him know I do want to come back and I do have interest in it. It's almost like you're... You know, you meet somebody who runs a business, and you're like, hey, you know, I'll let you know when I get out of college or whatever, I want to stop yeah. by and fill out an application. Dude, my, you know, I mentioned my folks, right? They're mm-hmm. Italian immigrants. My brother and sister were both born over in Italy, and uh, they came over. My, I think my sister was a toddler. My brother was an infant. Mm. Uh, so his brain popped on the plane. Oh. Um, so the, the uh, no. But anyway. Uh, you know, my folks are, they're like, they're this big and uh-huh. brown and like olive skin, brown eyes, black hair. And I came out, Wow. you know, I'm six, three and had, had You're blue the eyes. Huh? It was we- like my mom, when I was born, I can't imagine it. You were taller than her. I was two feet tall. My mom was five feet tall. Oh. So that's a problem. So I feel like I've got that little. Like my mom's side of the family, little tiny, cute Italians, mm-hmm. funny, you know, singing, laughing, and um, my dad's side, I think, has some more like northern uh, blood in him. So the next time around, I definitely have that coming. I'm gonna be like like a Joe Pesci, mm, or yeah. you know, I'm gonna be born in Colombia, 
And that just little like, guy. Yeah, yeah, this is good. This is cool. And I got that coming to me. That's probably why I'm talking about, you know, inclusion in media and uh, film and TV. Yeah, because what will we be next time, you know? Yeah, I'm not going to be able to play like the, you know, the big dopey fat husband in sitcoms. Yeah. I'm going to have to be, I'm going to have to really bring it, you know? And it's like, I'm going to be on This Fool, hopefully, if that show's still going. This Fool, though. That show is fucking. Is it? Oh, it's fucking I got to check it out. Yeah, it's a good show. Yeah, I love being around like uh like Mexican people and listening to them and dude a lot of them um did they have any Mexican people on Mad TV? Yeah. Um uh well the f- first the f- before I was there I and showed I want up to apologize the for that season. chair. I know it might be a little no, remember the last time? Is this the same chair you bring this last from the other studio? Last time it studios? was hot, remember? Yeah, it was hot. I was wearing a fucking hoodie and a Santa hat, and I sweat right through the... Remember, there was like a nice yeah. big patch of... I ruined the pleather. No, it's not that bad. I'm just... I wear shorts all the time, so my, my stuff is always Oh, that's sticking. good. Um, before I showed up at MAD, there was Pablo Francisco, oh, stand-up. Yeah. And then um, then it was... Uh, while I was there, we, we had Nelson Asensio join the cast, and he was a fucking home run hitter. A lot of the shit was sorely missing from Mad TV, um, like you know, because he was doing Enrique Iglesias and Ricky Martin. Oh and, yeah, and they used to do this thing called Buenos Dias San Diego mm. with him and Mo Collins. It was so fucking funny. Um, and then after that, I guess Angela Johnson. After I left, uh, Johnny Sanchez. Oh yeah, yeah. So they 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 finally got with it. Was there was there was there bits that they did that you guys did back then that y'all couldn't do now? You think all of them? Really? Fucking dude, I I watched like it was on HBO Max for a minute, Mad TV. So I was like, oh okay, I'll go watch. Like I haven't seen it on a yeah. television screen in so long. It's all just you know like degenerated videos on YouTube. So. But only half the episodes out of a given season, and there were 14 seasons of that show, only half of the episodes in a season would show up. And I remember talking to a couple of my cohorts, you know, going like, when it came out, like, I wonder what happened. I think, and I think it's because, well, this shit is too fucked up. I I think there's a lot of stuff that if you remember, like, if you remember some of it, it's like, what? You can't, you can't do any of that shit anymore. You just can't. And not this. This is tame. This is uh, we're looking at Paul Timberman, which is like a you know a, um, a you know like a guy who's got like a woodworker, a wood shop teacher who cuts his yeah, appendages. He's off. always yeah. yeah. He's always hacking himself up, and he's got a to camera sort of this old house type show where he's like, I'm going to build you a curio cabinet, and here's a let's make a lazy Susan, and I'm sawing my fucking hand off. But a lot <laughs> of the stuff that's like you know a lot of the racial shit we did, yeah. We had it all, sexism, racism, you know, all the misogyny, homophobia. But, you know, we also had, um, there were, there were, there was, a, you know, you can watch Mad TV and I, I can watch Mad TV and go, oh, that was, you know, this writer who's, who's like, this is a gay writer who wrote this. And mm-hmm. it's like incredible stuff where it's like slipping in, uh, you know, their representation. Mm-hmm. I remember there was this one the brilliant writer who was there for, for, most of the years of the, the show, I believe, Scott King, Scotty King, who's a fucking genius. He, I remember this one sketch. It's like you could just, you know, a Scott King sketch when you when you see it. And there was, I remember there was this one where <laughs> it was just, it was TRL, right? Mm-hmm. So Pat Kilbane is Carson Daly, and it just pans by the kids. It's like, hey, what's up? Welcome to TRL. I'm Carson Daly today on the show. Rah rah rah. And the kids are screaming. It's like we got NSYNC, Britney Spears, and the kids are screaming. And it's all like, you know, teenage girls are like, ah, screaming. And then he goes, and I'm Carson Daly. And all the girls sit down and a fat 12-year-old boy goes, yay! <laughs> you know, which is like was so fucking funny. And it's like, that's Scott. That's Scott going, this is what I would have been. So, you know, even that's that, awesome. but even that though, if you put it, you know, today and it's all, you know, you can't fucking joke about anything or whatever. That's crazy. I wish they had a show called Fat and Gay. Yeah. Fat Gay 12-Year-Old. I would love to play the dad in Fat Gay 12 Year Old. You yeah. know what I mean? Because also that's a that's a fucking character arc for me. That's something for me as an actor yeah. to chew on. Because at first I could be that dad who's like, yeah, well, no son man. of mine, that whole thing. We ain't gaying out around here, right. boy. You know, you know? A, yeah. the, eat another steak. Yeah. Eat, eat another ham steak, Billy. Yeah. Put the barrettes back in the car. <laughs> 
Yeah, you're not. We're not going to fucking Forever Twenty One. Yeah, you get that glitter off your kneecaps. <laughs> Like, Why what? you got glitter on your kneecaps? <laughs> Did I hear you wore glitter on your kneecaps at the baseball game, Billy? Yeah, boy. It helps me uh, when I'm catching. You know, I'm a catcher and I got to bend at the knees, yeah. and the glitter helps me with my flexibility. Now go get your helmet on. We're getting back in the game. Yeah, but then after a while, yeah. he you know he grows to maybe the dad falls asleep son. in his chair one night. He's drunk, right? Yeah, and then he wakes up and uh, you know Billy Elliot is on or something. <laughs> Billy Elliot. It's like a movie about a gay kid in yeah. uh, Australia. Yeah. Or maybe um, what's a gay? What's something with a gay kid in it? Glitter knees. Yeah. What is that movie? Glitter knees. Glitter yeah. knees. Watch a YouTube is on and he finds out it's his son making it. It's he's he's watching like a makeup tutorial. Yeah. And he's like, I recognize those knees. Oh, that's Magic Fart sixty right there. Right. And he's fucking painting, and the kid's painting his knees oh. up. The next you want to do is you want to contour your kneecaps. And then you want to put glitter on the kneecap and right down the middle. And this is going to give the appearance. He's going to go, that sounds like Billy. And then he yep, kicks down oh. the fucking door and, and Billy's Billy. live streaming. And he's doing he's doing a makeup tutorial, putting glitter on his knees for the baseball team. Off my knees for dad. That's his handle. <laughs> off my knees for dad. Yeah, it's like he's trying to be not gay. Yeah. He's like, I ain't being gay, boy. Yeah. I'm off my knees for dad. And then And then dad comes around to it and is like, I love you no matter what. And then, oh, 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 this is a lovely scene. Here's mm -hmm. a lovely scene at the okay. end of the first season mm -hmm. of uh, Billy Elliot. Uh, you know, we've had the whole uh, makeup tutorial, and Billy's putting glitter on his knees, and Bill Sr. is not having it. And they go through their whole thing, and he comes around. And so Billy's up to bat, and he's super nervous, and his dad never shows up to games. And he's like, he's there, and he's like about to, he's about to hit, and he's facing a, a pitching machine run by an AI that mm. only zooms him at 110 miles an hour. And he's like about to hit, and he goes, he goes, you can, he hears, you can do it, Billy. And he looks out into the stands, and his dad's there in a pair of jammer shorts, and he pulls him up, and he's got <gasps> glitter on his knees. Uh. And the boy's like, and he hits a fucking home run, at like the natural, right? And it hits yeah. the fucking lights because it's a night game. And then that's all hits glitter. the lights, and there's two dudes behind the scoreboard, like back there, just, just slurping on each other. Yeah, <laughs> and one of them, right when it hits yeah. the scoreboard, he pops out like this. Yeah, like, what the and heck? the other one's got his foot in his <laughs> in his asshole, and he goes ah, <laughs> like he's at the Philharmonic. <laughs> and then Tchaikovsky starts playing, and that's a fucking TV show. That's that's how we get inclusivity. Dude. And that's how, and then I'll win a fucking Emmy, right, for playing the fucking dad who came around. He's a good dude at the end of the day. And that's all I want. Just a big white guy in a mustache, <laughs> a fucking white identifying <laughs> Southern Italian by blood. But I'm a big white Canadian who enunciates most words. Yeah. That's how whenever I'm around Tom Green, we fucking out enunciate each other. <laughs> Hello, how are you, Tom? I am fine, Will. How are you? I am good. Uh, what is your favorite beverage at uh, Tim Hortons? I like coffee. I also like coffee. Do you like the donuts? I do. They make good donuts. That's the most Canadian shit. That's all like the whole, hey, how's it going, eh, hoser? Yeah. That's a Canadian thing for sure. But the most Canadian thing is to just be like, I'm sorry I cut you off in traffic. <laughs> that is okay. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Here is a Tim Hortons coupon. Thank you very much. Here is a Tim Hortons coupon. <laughs> we exchanged Tim Hortons coupons on the freeway. <laughs> uh -oh. OMKFD, dude. Off my knees for dad, bro. Off my knees for dad. That's the musical. <laughs> God, and so what we're trying to say is these kids shouldn't be working at McDonald's. That's all we're trying to say. Get the fucking poor Mexican kids out of McDonald's. Bullshit. These or poor let kids them work. Have to do this. If they're gonna, for, dude, here's the thing. Every culture has had their time to be the working, the immigrate, like the first line of working in America. Every culture has. Absolutely. Irish people. Irish did it. people were black. People did it by. Black. I mean, they were. Uh, they, they had were, zero choice in the matter. They didn't have a choice, but they did it. Uh, Italians built the fucking did it. country. Yeah, starting with black people, then Irish people getting black lung in the you know, uh, uh, you know, in the in the in the mines and shit. Yep. Italians, which was a little bit of reparations. I'm not saying it wasn't reparations, but giving that many people black lung, dude, is definitely <laughs> a lot of people died from black lung. 
Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. How many people died from black lung? About as many as they're replacing at IBM. <laughs> About what? a thousand miners die from coworkers' pneumonia. Sinus, 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 sinus. A year now? Oh, that's fucked up. So seventy six thousand. Okay, so no, so it's still not close, but it's like anyway. Since nineteen sixty eight, seventy six thousand. Right. Yeah, I mean that's that's uh, that's people die. Uh you know, as an as a Italian by by blood, I always kind of go like, you know, Italian, <clears throat> but and also because I don't look. You know, like, you don't look like Joe Pesci. I don't. No, you don't. I got an Italian. I got my dad's nose, but uh, that's about it. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, I always kind of feel like, eh. Again, I'm not the person to say it because I don't look very Italian. But it's like that's like the lightest, in my opinion, racism. Although I wasn't around in the '60s when a lot of, uh, well, since the early 1900s, a lot of Italians were showing up in North America, but. You know, it feels like the 60s and the 70s, a lot of immigration in Canada. And uh, I kind of feel like that's a, speaking as an Italian, uh, Italian North American, an Italian Canadian American. Italian, You're from Baja. Um, yeah, from the Baja all the way down to <laughs> South American Italian. Uh, you know, I always kind of feel like, eh, it, you know, you can't really be racial against Italians. Like, what are you going to say? And I feel like, like that Mario movie that came out mm -hmm. and it's and people were like, you know, they hired, you know, they got uh, Chris Pratt played Mario, which is something we talked about on Dudesy a lot because it was like the first trailer you saw. It's like, I'm Mario. It's a me, Mario. What is this place? The Mushroom Kingdom. Where am I? I'm Mario. That's not what he's supposed to sound like. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the studio got pressure because it's like you hire the biggest star that you can hire and there's no real like. You know, Guido sounding Italian American right now. Yeah. Maybe Sebastian Maniscalco could have done it. I don't know that there would be a, you know, he's, but you got to be a movie star. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, to push those numbers and make a billion, that movie made a billion dollars. And I want to say, as an Italian American, hire whoever you want. That's my, uh, that's my offering to inclusion. Chris Pratt's just fine. We in the Italian community don't give a shit. Uh, cause you can't really be racist against Italians. You're going to make fun of pasta. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Get whoever you want. You could even get the gal who played the little mermaid to play Mario. For what about black Mario? Black Mario would have been black. Mario would have been fine. And there should have been a black Mario video game. There should be like one Ooh. mushroom that he hits that, you know, turns him into a black guy. So then it's like C. Oh, Thomas yeah. Howell in that movie, soul man, which is fucked up it's just a dude in blackface and radon chong buys it mm. remember this do you remember that movie dude i remember blackface so yeah i remember yeah you were around in the i mean i Al remember Jolson. dudes doing it soul man is the trippiest fucking movie there it's he a is. wait i've never seen this this is a white guy oh uh yeah there's a movie in the 1980s where c thomas howell goes uh undercover essentially to go to college uh, and he pretends to be a black man, and then he hooks up with Ray Don Chong, who absolutely buys it, mm. and uh, we were all fine with it in the 80s, and uh, that's not a problem in the 80s, and this was a feature film that came out in the movie theater. Wow. We have a history of comedy in this country that is hard to reckon with now, uh, but I like to say that I'm grandfathered in, because I was on fucking Mad TV in mm. the 90s. And the 2000s there, where we, if you want to cancel me, just watch Mad TV. And then, you know, I'm fucked. Do you think at a certain point we'll be able to have character where everybody can be whatever? They, at some point it should be able to be that way. I, huh? I think that, I think that the, the shit's being stretched back so far now. It's like this. I feel like we're all in this weird, it's like I said, these things happen every 30 years, it seems mm -hmm. like, with regard to you know, social, the, the, you know, just the, the, um, the sand at the bottom of the sea getting oh, yeah. mixed up. And before the smoke clears, this social upheaval that seems to happen every 30 years, we are in the middle of it now. We're in a pivotal point in, in our country and in our culture. And it's my hope that everyone, that, that what we'll be left with is equality for everybody. And if we can actually, and again, I don't, not to sound negative, but I don't think it's possible. As much as I would like to see 
but I'm Canadian. I'm, I'm, we have our problems there for sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of, uh, a lot of crimes against the indigenous first nations people of, of Canada, uh, which is just absolutely fucking tragic. We have our problems there with other race relations also as well. But, um, I'm from Canada where at least the kind of the, the curriculum as a kid, you know, it was way more multicultural than it is here. I got here and I was like, wow, it's really fucking segregated socially. Yeah. Oh, we had a scratch and sniff history book I <laughs> for a while. Yeah. See, and the Italian scratch and sniff would have been fucking great. <laughs> yeah. No racism there. Kids would have worn that out just smelling fucking beefaroni or whatever you'd put in an American textbook. Dude, they I, just, go on. No, I was just going to say we're all fucked. But, uh, you know, the, the thing about it is I hope with regard to comedy that, you know, the comedy is just fucking comedy. We got to laugh. Gallows humor is really important. Yeah. And if we're treating each other well and there's, uh, you know, equality socially and everyone can laugh because everyone feels good about where they are in life and we are a society that takes care of one another. And, uh, I mean, again, I'm from Canada where there's socialized medicine. It's pretty fucking good. And if you're not living in a fucking world where you're allowed to walk around and fucking eat berries and kick a chicken against a tree and, you know, do whatever you want and just build a fucking house without any code or anything like that. If we're going to live in a society where you're born into a fucking system, system needs to take care of everybody, period. Mm. And it ain't fucking happening. And that's going to be my platform. But <laughs> if that's the case and we can achieve something like that, again, I do not think it's possible at all. We're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just put that in there. I ain't running for office. But if we can do that, then we can start to laugh at absolutely everything again. <sighs> right now, people are not wanting to laugh at shit, and they have every right not to laugh at shit because stuff is fucking dire. So you can't go on Mad TV and make fun of absolutely everybody. Although, you know, we had Ari Spears, Deborah Wilson, Phil Lamar. But it was funny at the time. De H it hilarious. Makes me fucking laugh now. Those people that, that I learned... At, so much about but black you, culture and laughing, you know, with them, and also growing up. Don't watching you think and that most people still and, just want to laugh? They don't yes, really man. care. I think so, but I think it's it's just like it's like you know, it's like uh, no one's going to let themselves fucking laugh. Mm, you know what I mean? Now it, that's it, interesting. It's, Do it's, we let ourselves laugh? No. Do because, we keep ourselves from? Yeah, we all get on this alert kind of where it's like. Don't point at me. Don't offend me. You know, I mean, I got upset over the pandemic over like uh, during the like last big election thing, because the only people that people were making fun of was poor white people. Right. And it was like, well, what the fuck did we do? It's like, yeah, that's poor white people didn't even like we didn't do any like like we didn't do race. Like I'm sure that ri wealthier white people probably owned slaves. I don't know any, nobody I knew had a, they didn't, I don't think they ever had a slave, you know, or they're, they might've, but I couldn't imagine it, dude. But it's socially, it's just, if you look at it generally, totally socially acceptable to make fun of poor white, white people. Right. In 2020. Right. Totally, totally acceptable. And it, and, and none of it should be acceptable. Unfortunately or fortunately, Things do need to be mixed up a bit and you need, and you know, I always, I use the example of in 2020 learning about Juneteenth. Yeah. I was like, I didn't fucking, I, I was telling black friends, I'm like, never heard of the fucking Juneteenth. I don't know what the fuck that is. What is that? I had no clue that there Most was Most of my black friends have no idea what it is until it came out. <laughs> that too, yeah. They kind of launched it a few years ago, I feel like. I mean, yeah. I know they didn't, but it's like, if you'd have asked any black kid where I'm from or what Juneteenth was, it'd have no fucking clue. Yeah. No, but it's it's interesting what you're saying about, like, it's like, oh yeah, it's easy to make fun of fucking, you know, poor white people. I feel like that's another symptom of, of the social sort of... Again, the 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 silt at the bottom of the ocean getting uh, getting um, getting smoked up. Do you think we as a comedians then we have to be the ones to kind of like see where the thing is at? Then you know, I think yes. I think you know in in, in your avenue with with podcasting and stand up and sort of you know I'm primarily an actor, but I love doing weird shit on the internet and doing podcasting and stuff. And also, you know, if I can be responsible for any sort of weird creative uh, shit if I ever get to, you know, work on things and make stuff. It, it's, it is up to us, but it, it is also, it's quite a responsibility because we're, it's this bizarre currency of quote unquote cancellation, which some people 
don't even think exists, which is to me, it's weird. It's like, well, you just said cancellation. That means that it's a word. It's a term. Right. It exists. Um, and I think that you, you have to be, you have to be, uh, a brave comedian to kind of look, it's not fun to just go out there and go, I want things to be the way they used to be in the nineties. That to me, to me personally, as a comedy fan, to me, that's hack. Yeah. It's like to not push shit fucking forward. Mm. Great comedians have a complete, like, I'm sure you, you, you love him. I love George Carlin, right? Like mm -hmm. just to, come on. That, that guy was always years ahead of his time and always shot right down the middle you knew exactly what he was thinking, and mm -hmm. he represented himself completely honestly. I think that um, you know comedians who who are being one hundred percent honest and not just trying to you know be shocking for shocking sake or say I should be allowed to say this because I said it in nineteen ninety five. Mm. You know, I think audiences today that's fine, but your audience is going to be awfully specialized if you just want to be a prick. Uh, about things and say everyone should laugh at these things that currently people are uh, sensitive about and for good reason. Mm -hmm. If you can find new things to laugh about, there are new things to laugh about in our completely fucking bizarre social climate. Yeah. It's fucking bizarre. You just said, I got black friends who grew up with that wouldn't have known Juneteenth. That's a joke you couldn't say in 1998 because – Absolutely nobody knew what the fuck you were talking about with Juneteenth. Yeah. But 2020 was a really, uh, was such a, uh, you know, a rife year of, of uh, you know, with the pandemic and, 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 and the, you know, the social. Oh of yeah. It got black. Black Lives Matter. Man. Yeah. It was, it was wild. Yeah. 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 So it's like now I think you, I think you can, uh, but you got to be smart about it and I'm not. I'm not smart about it. I don't, <laughs> I'm not saying that's me at all. And I'm not, yeah, I've never been. Answer. Yeah. But, but I, I do think that, I think that people will start to chill out a little bit mm -hmm. because socially what happens in my opinion, my, is just my opinion with these waves is that people all get fucking tired. You know, at the end of the day, we just want to, most people just want the same shit yeah they want to be able to take care of their families they want to have mm -hmm. something nice for dinner they want to know that they're safe at home they want to know that if they go to the wrong fucking door they're not going to get shot in the face mm -hmm. uh the, the horrible shit that's happening right now because everyone is so wound up and charged up it's truly fucking scary People are scared man i realized the other day i'm walking up to a car i did and it was it wasn't my car i get right by the door handle i realized it wasn't my car it looked just like my car there's somebody sitting in that car and i'm like Oh my God, that person could fucking shoot me. Right now, yeah. I and I to. wouldn't even think it was crazy yeah. because that's just where the fear level is at. It's like yeah. all these POV videos of all this fear. Um, it's it's interesting, man. It's a it's a it's a it's a fiery time out there. I, and I'm never afraid of anything because I look like a gigantic football coach cop. And I drive a uh, a Tahoe, so I could yeah. I could technically be a park ranger. Uh, we need so, that Alex Jones back, though. Just just in general, I think we need him. You know what I would love to see him do, and this is what I thought he was going to get into was like a, a regular guy's job after he had the big uh, lawsuit against him was um, <laughs> a regular manager guy. in like a Denny's or something, yeah. manager in like an IHOP. Yeah, I got. You got to get the moons over my, and they're making the moons over my hammy gay. Ah, I'm a humanist. You got, you got, uh, let me tell you something about these people out here eating mozzarella sticks. I've eaten mozzarella sticks at Bohemian Grove. It was invented by Mark Twain. Uh, just uh, orig uh, 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 and originally it was just a, uh, a place for these globalists, uh, people to, it was uh, actually a lot of closeted uh, homosexual activity <laughs> happening there, mostly by Republicans. Oh, yeah. But Democrats <laughs> took it over, and uh, John F. Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy Jr., Bobby Kennedy, uh, they went out to Bohemian Grove. You can still go there. It's in Northern California. <laughs> and they're deep in the forest, wearing robes like druids. And, sir, uh, I, need, I want an cookouts. omelet, sir. I'm looking for an omelet. <laughs> yeah, what do you want? Uh, how would you like your eggs? <laughs> you want white toast, wheat toast? Right. Uh, I hate this uniform. Uh, ah, just always ripping off his fucking polo shirt. Uh, you want to see my name tag? Uh, you know, and these people are, they're reptiles. 
<laughs> I've seen it up close. They don't have skin like you and me. I've been up close. To, I've been next to Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> Hillary Clinton. These people are not human. They're interdimensional beings. They come in, they open wrens in the, uh, in the fabric of time and space, <laughs> yeah. and they walk through. And I, uh, I don't want to see it. <laughs> Everybody wants the same thing at the end of the day. They just want to be able to watch, uh, you know, sit down, eat their frijoles. And watch white porn McNuggets. with their family. Watch <laughs> white porn with their family. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and, wa and watch this fool on TBS. Um. What's your what's what's up with acting, man? What's going on? You got uh, dudesy going? Any new adventures going on with you? I'm about to go uh, shoot a movie in Canada called 1989. No, yeah, that'll be fun. With um, you ever heard of a Canadian cult classic called Fubar? Mm -mm. Okay, so uh, what, I know what it means. Yeah, yeah. So there's Fubar and there's Fubar Two, and this fucking uh, brilliant dude there's these two guys you know uh deaner and terry mm -hmm. and one of them paul spence who's uh he's the one in the green on the right there okay and then terry's on the left okay so the, it's the it's the origin story of the deaner of dean mm. and i play his dad and it's sort of like his, and he's he's part uh first nations so there's sort of that mm. bent to it which will be interesting which is a very canadian theme mm -hmm. so i'm doing that i'm doing another season of the show acapulco and then uh, I don't know, just picking up acting work. It's fucking weird now because we got this strike. Oh yeah, the strike's going on. Huh? Uh, listen, I just want to do again. I, you know, I would love to just play the dad in what is it, Billy Elliot? What's it called? Oh, Billy Elliot. Oh, knees? Uh, spa don't uh... get off my knees for dad. Yeah, uh, that's that would be at this point. You know, look, here's some more. Here's some more defeatist negativity from me. Yeah. I don't know what's happening to our business. When I think about, you know, what my pad Chad Culchin says with regard to AI, and he'll point right the fuck at me and go, your job will be obsolete very soon. And I'm like, no, it won't. And I go, your job will be obsolete very soon. He's a brilliant writer. And he goes, bring it on, motherfucker. Mm. Can't wait. He's doing a couple podcasts, so I guess his bread is buttered there. Um, <clears throat> hopefully we continue to do dudesy. I love acting. It's my, you know, it really yeah, is man, my well, passion. Yeah, man, we're so talented. You have, you have so, you offer so much joy and talent to people. Cheers, man. Likewise, dude. No, I, not like you do something though. What do you mean I do something? You do so. You you have a you, real skill set. What are you man. talking about? You fucking up in front of thousands of people, bringing your stories out there. That's uh, you're one of the best doing it right now. Period. Well, so. That's you know nice you, man. Yeah, it's I just, true, Theo. I feel like you're a, you are really really talented, man. Well, I feel so, like yeah, you're I really just... really talented. Here's a Tim Hortons. Uh, oh, and I'll give you my <laughs> Tim Hortons Thank you very Hortons much. Thing. Oh, two for one donut. Thank but you. But we, uh, yeah, I get. Yeah, I mean, look, everything's fine then. Yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, I think we're gonna be okay. Hey, this is the bottom line, everybody. Everything's gonna be fine. Just you know, hang out at home, and when you eat them chicken McNuggets, know that two, you know. Uh, probably underprivileged children who, yeah. uh, that were 10 years old made your nuggets. So when you get to the center mm -hmm. and you see that it's pink and you realize, oh, fuck, you know, now I'm going to be shitting myself all night. Yeah. Just know it's not the kid's fault. They don't know how to work the fucking fryer. Mm -hmm. Get your own fucking fryer and go out to Bohemian Grove <laughs> and make your own fucking, make a fire yeah. and, and boil some peanut oil and make your own chicken nuggets. Kick a chicken against a tree. These are actors. Apart. A lot of those guys are a lot of them are actors. Oh yeah, there's a lot of you want to talk about uh you want to talk about what is it? Spaceland pizza or whatever without the yeah. basement where the guy went in there and shot it up. Oh, the guy came on a napkin for the kids. Yep, came on a napkin with his glittery knees. You're in, you're listening to Tchaikovsky and just coming as hard as you can out there. Uh, there's nothing but forest out there at Bohemian. Uh, Come as loud as you want, you crazy old <laughs> weird fucking pervert lady. I love it. We get her out there. We all wear masks. Yeah. You know, fucking sex party style like Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz. And no one knows who's who. And I'm yeah. just, and I just got my fist up in something. There's a, there's a little heat in there. Yeah. And then I pull it out and I hear, oh, and I'm like, it's Mitch McConnell. <laughs> yeah. I know that's Mitch McConnell. I've made him come several times at Bohemian Grove. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Nancy Pelosi 
wearing a strap on fucking Mitch McConnell <laughs> in the ass and then just put wears his hole like a shoe and he I goes, like that oh, old Tommy rock, rock and, and roll. roll. <laughs> Start playing in the background. <laughs> the music kind of music just soothes the soul. And it's actually Bob Seger. I reminisce about the days of old when you could make shitty jokes on Mad TV. God, boy, free cum for everybody. That's what they're doing. You know what I think is interesting, though, Will? I think in the end, I think we all end up back in the Native American style. I think that something happens with society. I think it falls at some point. It has to. It doesn't hold up. And I think we all end up back in small tribes trying our best to take care of each other and and begging for the information of... uh, of the um, the nations, you know, the original nations people. Dude. I think, anyway, who knows? I don't know. The Earth has a way of making itself new, whether or not we're here. And it's like Ed Norton said in Fight Club, in the future I see, you will be climbing the wrist-thick kudzu vines up the Sears Tower because all this shit will be turned off. AI won't be any fucking worry. And it will be tribes. Have you watched Chimp Empire? Not yet. Watch Chimp Empire on on Netflix. That's really? where we're going. Yeah, they're they're of course you know they're chimps. They're ninety nine percent. They share ninety nine percent of our DNA. And I learned a lot of stuff about fucking chimps. Uh, and I agree with you. They're they're tribal, and I feel like and they just want to take care of their own. And mm-hmm. every once in a while, they kill someone from the other fucking tribe to show like, hey, our alpha is better than yours. Yeah. And um. But I agree. And and speaking as a Canadian, I would love nothing more than to, you know, than to, you know, eat fucking raw salmon. Oh, yeah. That's been, again, prepared you- by any of the guys at the sushi place that are searing the top with a fucking, with a, with a, uh, and a they're freshly used guys a AK-47. Yeah. Well, and that's, uh, by the a way. A lot of times they're, do- they're like painting their eyes like that on the edge of Mexican guys to make them even look Asian in a lot of like Japanese restaurants. That's what's crazy <laughs> to me. You seen this, Zach? Bring it up. <laughs> Wait, up. that's a thing? japanese out Mexican Dude. guys. Are you wearing tights? I'm wearing these shorts, and now I got the same. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm. I'm oh, yeah. Yeah, boy. we got. Whoa. I'm moistening your chair. I again. like that. I got glittery knees and, and fucking wet thighs right now. It's that time of year, man. Yeah. We'll wrap up soon. What happened here, Zach? Are you seeing any of this? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm not finding any. Mexican man, Chinese restaurant. That's not what you should look up then. What should I look up? Uh, Mexicaning Chinese people. Are you looking on images, man? Mexico's Chinese communities are seeing reverse migration. Mm, That's not it. Go to SushiDan.com. They got a few of those guys working there. I'm joking, of course. Oh. Well, people know what we mean. Um, Will Sasso, ladies and gentlemen, you can check him out on the Dudesy Pod. Um, I think we talked about a lot of stuff, huh? Yeah, dude. Yeah, <laughs> this was awesome, man. Man, thank Thanks you so for much for coming me, in. It was a pleasure, and uh, yeah, good luck with AI, man. Just be careful. <laughs> I will. Right. Now I'm just floating on the breeze, and I feel I'm falling like these leaves. I must be cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this peace of mind I found. I can feel it in my bones.